So before we continue our adventures throughout our second edition conversion of the Curse of the Crimson Throne, which I believe is the second ever Paizo Adventure Path, which is pretty impressive considering this was not a thing they really did. They had one test run with Rise of the Rune Lords, which admittedly I've never run and I'm not really familiar with. I then pulled out the absolute banger that is Curse of the Crimson Throne. I freaking love this adventure so far, even as early as we are. Uh, which you can check out yourselves with these this new fancy pocket edition here. It's the anniversary version with a ton of new art and a ton of new organizational general usefulness. The, the way it is laid out makes dramatically more sense than it did previously. Uh, it was, if you've ever looked at the original, it was definitely uh, one of the first full adventures <laughs> that had come together. This is more manageable and I like it. It's also the full adventure, all six books, all the appendices, everything in one tome. And thank you to Paizo, of course, for sponsoring us not only with this and the accompanying pawn box, which is a bunch of little miniatures that you can use. This is these little neat little cardboard thingamajigs here with the full art you can put on your table without having to worry about painting or organizing or transporting the like three-dimensional variable plastic miniatures. Fortunately, most of us are Warhammer experts here, so it's a thing we do on the regular anyway. Gun cases are surprisingly good at Gun transporting Gun cases are so. great at it. Magnets. They're fantastic. Magnets is my go-to. Magnets on the inside of the metal toolbox and mm -hmm. just stick them all through that. That's what we're about. Thank you for my haunted harrow deck. And the, yeah, the, the neat pathfinder. It's hero. gorgeous. I pick them all up and get spikies in my hands. I do that too. Yeah, but you play orcs, so. You quite literally just like two fist all of your army into a Tupperware bucket and just I, haul it down to I wherever also, you're going. Do we have music? I um, also do that. Orcs are very tough and very sharp. I don't think their canonical lore carries over to the physical plastic miniatures. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> uh, thank you as well to other sponsors, Norse Foundry, with all these fancy metal dice. Uh, and we have a great discount code for them. It scrolls around the bottom there as it goes by. And some recently we have one for Arkin Forge as well. Definitely my favorite map creation software that I have used for trying to fill in some of the holes in the various adventures, some of the weird crap you idiots decide to do, uh, which leads us to unplanned situations that may not exist in the actual adventure. Uh, but also running the game with a physical monitor on the table. And Sirenscape, the source of all of our immersive sound sets and everything. I say it every week because I've had such a large amount of my prep being setting up custom sound sets because I like having them so much that not having to do that because there's an official one saves me such an insane amount of time. At least 10 minutes. At least 10 minutes. It is indeed at least 10 minutes. As we had left off last week... We had come back with pretty resounding success from our first mission for the Corvosan Guard. We had captured Varric van Kaskerken and all of the cowboys <laughs> and escorted them back to Citadel Volshenik. Almost. We got them all. <laughs> all survivors. All, did, if, we, all, we, we brought all of them back. You did. Yes, we did bring the body, didn't we? You have physically transported <laughs> all of them. All of the human figures that were once the Cowhammer Boys. <laughs> we got all the Cowhammer Boys. And most of them are even still alive. Most of them are alive. The ones that John didn't get to. <laughs> Four fifths of them. But regardless of the intervention of John Double Homicide Tiller, <laughs> <self -defense. laughs> only one loss there. And then we had. A bit of time to ourselves. There was not immediately another task that needed our uh, attention, not another thing that these, we are really truly little more than mercenaries, uh, crown sanctioned as we may be, working for the Cor uh, Corvosan Guard in, I suppose, a more official capacity than a traditional mercenary. Uh, but given the desperate situation of, well, everything in the wake of the king's death, they're taking what they can get. And We're mercs with mouths to feed. You guys. Uh, many of you had gone to attempts to gather some information about Arden's nephew, uh, having dealt with an information broker far up in Old Corvos on the north in town. And John... Doing the Corvos and Stomp. 
right towards the citadel. Had gone out to just, you know, have a day, live his life as well as he could. Almost immediately got accosted by an extremely drunk man uh, who definitely thought you were not John, but Nephi. I am Nephi. I don't know what you're talking about. Who you had uh, later found out was once the watch captain of Citadel Voshevik and were escorting him back and, uh, to the castle for, well, wherever exactly that will lead. Processing. Processing. Another drink. A quick marriage. So we begin today's adventure. Uh, John had made his way back to the Citadel. And this man, just so blindly drunk that by the time he really realized, it kind of struck him, wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> this is the Citadel. Uh, you had already been met by some of the other guards on site. Uh, he looked a little betrayed, perhaps, but put up no resistance as oh, they Nephi, how could you do took that him to further me? inside. And uh, shortly after... The rest of the party, the four of you, I imagine, will be making your way up the walk as well uh, to meet John just inside the gatehouse of the Citadel here in the mid-afternoon. So, how was, how was your morning? Did you get anything? Well, actually. Y yeah. Y y yeah, we, 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 we did. We called up quite a bit of information. Oh. No, this is for you. I'll just throw him the half bottle of whiskey at the bar. I'm not going to drink. Oh, I might drink a little bit later, but you look like a man who enjoys that brand. All right. Oh, I mean, I can certainly put it to good use. Are you going to use it to clean your gun? That would not be a good idea. Oh. <laughs> no, I will not be doing that one. But, um, no, it seems that um, Floblin has some connection. Uh, a, a knows an information broker who, who is able to uh, point us in the right direction. Um, apparently, Lem has a son who's just as twisted and vile as his father and is uh, looking to uh, basically pick up his father's leavings. First but, bit of information is very surprising. Second bit, not so much. Well, apparently he has some dealings with the Academy, which is closed down right now. I wonder if the if the marshal would be able to give us, uh, give us access, uh, maybe a, a warrant or at least the keys or permission. Uh, that could be that could be really good. Um, although we're not there on official capacity, but we could ask her. D won't, won't we get we get in trouble with with the people from the academy? Won't won't they get upset because we're trespassing? Well, if if we have permission to be there, it's not trespassing. C can the guards give us permission? I I don't know. I mean, if if any of the guard could get permission, the marshal could. Oh okay. As well, try I suppose. Worst case, we could just you know snake in. I don't like the idea of sneaking into an academy full of magic casters. Oh. Yeah. I I hear bad stories about that kind of thing. I mean, oh, I feel worse idea. about it if, you know, they didn't have such a, a demonstrated bad record of holding on to their own imps. I'm so tricky. Well, it, it could be a lot easier to get out than in. That's also true. Especially when you got wings. Well, far better than for the marshal to give us the keys, if she can. Maybe well, if we had wings, it wouldn't be that bad. I, don't... I mean, while we're wishing... I, I I have spider legs. That's not wing. That's a little creepy. That is a little what? strange. Well, they, they 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 don't stick around forever, but but I have them. It's all, like that. That doesn't make it any more comforting. But like you can have spider legs when you want them. Well, well, well. They're, they're yeah. I can just walk on walls. I mean, that's that's, that's useful. Potentially quite u useful. Okay. All right. I, I'm I'm starting to see it now. Okay. All right. All right. All right. It took me a minute. It took me a minute. Um. Well, hopefully we don't have to. Hopefully the watch captain can just go ahead and give us a give us a warrant or something. We can just walk in and check it Copper out. Copper bell! And you hear a uh, familiar voice call out just outside the gatehouse and uh, turn to see a figure approaching. Full, perfect, upright, uh, wide-brimmed hat, just so askew. Uh, still in his sable company form with a trident slung across his back. The... Standard, uh, the normal drill sergeant you'll be working with down at your training grounds, not too far from the Citadel itself. Sir! It's good to see you, sir. Gotta look at you. Uh, take a gaze across the rest of the group. 
seeming to regard Floblin just as derisively as he does Arden and Ref. Uh, but John, you you sense no real hostility here. It seems normal and uh, amicable enough to you. And he looks over. Well, consider my damn surprise when I heard that you'd signed up with the Covert and guard up here in the Citadel. Signed up more like uh, press ganged, but uh, you sent me home. So I had to do something to keep the city from falling apart. That's a jump ship across the street. How many years, Copper Bell? Training down disabled company grounds, working your way up, trying to get admission, waiting for any opening? You've been a damn sight more dedicated than basically an act like any uh, act we've had. Turn our back for five minutes and find you up here? You should... Uh, desperate time, sir. Also, the invite me. It's hard to it's hard to say no to her. I see a bit of a smirk on his face. Relax, Copperbell. I don't have authority over you anymore. Truth be told, any I had you just gave me anyway. You never with us on official business. You're just a hopeful. For now, sir. That looks across the group of your friends. Still am. And uh raises brief hand. Kind of not not towards you, not not, not in a, like solid greeting, but almost kind of just like sideways. Almost uh type of salute. Like he's about to smack a <laughs> goblin. <laughs> or an uppity recruit. <laughs> that, that, that's, that's, that's it. Sergeant nice. Parvazo, Sable Company. I had come to check up on, well, interesting news I had heard about some of the new recruits up here with the Corvos and Guard. Couldn't believe it without seeing it with my own two eyes, and yet here you are. Teaching the street rats how to properly care for things. Uh, that ain't too far from what uh, John there said, honestly, it's not it Sounds exactly like you're causing all kinds of technical errors on that end. That was my dice disconnecting the battery died. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the Bluetooth dong. No. Darren, truth be told, had a spare moment. Here they come up here and honestly, so I can make sure everything was going all right with you. Me, Sarge, I, I appreciate that. Look, Copper Bell. I'm not familiar with any of your friends here. But, truth be told, you always want to keep your private life separate from your dreams of the Sable Company. Which is wise, honestly. Better than most of, the, uh, both, most of the adepts do. And from what I've heard, after the King's passing a couple of days ago, you're damn near the only trainee that's done anything but tuck tail and run to cover. Maybe that was smarter. I don't know what you're hoping to accomplish up here. Well, she makes me damn proud. Thank you, sir. Uh, once, once all this dies down and training opens up again, I'll, I'll be back. I don't know. From what I hear, the Corvosan Guard's pretty desperate for help, and it sounds like you've made, you're making yourself a pretty solid name. Most of this training, most of what you've been through anyway, basic physical regiments, discipline. So stilling a certain spirit. I'll transfer in the guard will be good to have you. You're good for the city. Honestly, you got a good family here, Copperbell. Sable Company have you traveling. Pretty far afield. Mission's not even necessarily still uh, still within the boundaries of Varicia. Out to Magnamar even further. Corvos and guard keeps you closer to home. It's safer. It's easier. By all rights, very possibly better. Oh. Maybe, maybe I'll agree someday. And uh, he reaches up. Trident. Spec, which is a tri something you would definitely recognize. Mm -hmm. It is almost like a symbolic weapon of the Sable Company, uh, being the Marines of Land, Sea, and Air. It is a weapon that excels in all three of those theaters. Uh, just as versatile as a short spear on land, uh, easily designed with the weighted head to be thrown, from the back of a griffin uh, flying through the air and perfectly serviceable in or underwater. Uh, it's a degree of iconic. Arden will and, instinctively uh, take a step back when he pulls the trident. He kind of looks at you a little weird for just a brief glance for a moment. He pulls the trident out and holds it, holds it out broad in front of him. Sergeant? Takes a step towards you, writes himself up. Darren Copperbell, you're no longer one of our trainees of the Sable Company. But whatever it is you're doing for the guard here, said he's a damn mess. Keep yourself safe. I can't officially award this to you with any honorary titles, but, well, 
given the state of damn near everything within this, in this city's walls, I'm sure you're going to hand it to you unofficially. Sir. I won't let you down, sir. Look at Zach. Congratulations, Darren. I don't know how happy the rats will be to have you wielding that one with the Corvos and emblem on your chest. <laughs> Shum. What do they call us? Wingers, sir. Sean, what they can do. I'm not really I'm not really uh, sure I understand. I will. Don't you both work for the city? Why why do you not like each other? I'll I'll tell you later, Arden. It's like a rivalry thing. Don't worry about the company, Darren. What about you? Stay safe, right? We'll take care of ourselves, and we'll take care of each other. He puts up a salute first, which you would know is absolutely like not something he, he is, would never salute you at all, <laughs> uh, and has never any of the time that you have been down trained with the Sable Company. That's not the way that this hierarchy, this chain of command goes. You salute him, and he yells at you. <laughs> <laughs> He I, snaps this off. Thank you, sir. At least I can do. And uh, looks the rest of the group. The rest of you? I don't know you. I don't know where you came from. I'm damn not sure why any of you are here. Same. Well, somebody's got to look after the kid. Well, if you're working for the guard, hopefully you're doing something right by the city of Corvallis and the crown. Do it proud. Stay safe. Thank you, sir. And he, uh, without a further word, turns almost on his heel back towards the gate. You would know of this trident, but you have definitely never been able to wield one yourself. Before that, though, Blade Tiger, John, looking a little dry on hero points there. Thank you. Which card is this? I think we just need the title, so we've gone through the whole deck now. Zesperate to swing. This had better work. You know that these... <laughs> Tridents are uh, enhanced, uh, not traditional runes, uh, but an innate magic. They are near identical across the Sable Company, and it's something Sorry. that is very much unique to them. Uh, they are as versatile as the Marines are to be. Uh, well, it is functionally a plus and trident uh, with a single action and a, and a twist on the grip the haft can extend by several feet, hmm. which makes it much more unwieldy and difficult to throw. It loses the throne trait, but gains reach instead. Hmm. Wow. You would be familiar with their operation, even had you definitely uh, never been worthy of using one yourself. Wow. That's actually really cool. think that in that was odd. That's a strange thought. I'm not really sure what that means. <laughs> it's my brain skipping its beat in silence. <laughs> D Darren, is that... I've wanted one of these. I wanted to earn what? one of these. What do you say? You want what, to go giant try fork? its elves? I can, I can do that. Yeah, let's go try its elves. This is fun. Are we catching big deal? Reminds me as a kid. Training was my father. Uh, let's was, go. Was he your dad? Sort of. He trained me. He trained me for about a year. Wow. It, it, that, that's an honor for him to give you his, his weapon. I know. I've always dreamed of earning one. I... <laughs> oh, the quartermaster when he sees one of these. I can't wait to see his eyes bug out of his head. <laughs> you gotta just hand it on over the counter. Yeah, could you put one of them fancy runes in this for me? <laughs> oh, don't twist that little bit right there. Oh, too late. <laughs> no, this is... This is everything I've ever wanted. Weird time for it to be. I know he said I could do well in the guard, but once all this is over and calms down, Sable Company is my dream. I'll chase it downtown again. And, oh, jeez. Uh, I can't. I can't. That's really Pull sweet. Out handkerchief. Just pass it over to him. <laughs> Ignore uh, the blood. Floblin yeah. and uh, Arden, is your not as. I either confused or clearly not as engaged in this as Darren is looking back towards the gate as the uh, sergeant leaves. The two guards at the gate, I clearly see what transpired just inside the gatehouse here, and are definitely giving some weird looks towards Darren and his newfound trident here. Uh, those of you of Corvosa uh, would realistically probably not, this is none of your freaking training society, uh, unless that's changed. 
No? No. 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 It, that was funny. I can no. roll. No. I mean, none of you would, would be quite as clear on this distinction between the guard and the sable company. So how they, how these two guards at the gatehouse regard the sergeant and, and Darren with his trident now would probably seem kind of weird because they're almost dismissive. Uh, the two guards almost like clearly chuckling as if some sort of joke has transpired. But clearly Darren seems beyond touched by this. I I guess it's like a it's like a city person thing. I I don't know. I I just think it's a giant fork. It's a, it's a giant weapon. It, I mean, clearly it's it's very big. You can get a very big pick with that. It's not shaped like a fork at all. It it kind of looks like a. Fork. But but, but I don't. The teeth on the fork and closer together. Wrath wrath wrath. Well, he's a bigger person than I am, so I would assume he needs a bigger fork. I, I that still, makes sense. I still this don't why understand. I hate talking to goblins. No. <laughs> You guys are good, but don't don't interrupt. Their oh, scene. sorry. If they're done, you can yeah. go. Oh. I I I still don't understand why they don't like each other. Well, it's it's kind of. What what would you say is the best way to put it, Darren? Mm-hmm. Oh, in another world, <laughs> <laughs> staring at the trident. Just... You see, he's it's, obsessed with his giant form. Um, <laughs> it's a competitive rivalry. Not really. Did you ever have brothers? That's it. Yep. Brothers. It, it, well, yeah, I have a nephew. <laughs> yes. Right. I, okay. I understand. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so when brothers, they work together on a lot of things, kind of like for the city. The city is sort of the family and the Sable Company and the guard are sort of brothers. And they all work to help the city out, but they do it different ways. And, you know, the guard do it one way. They trudge the streets, they keep order, they make sure they investigate petty crimes. And the Sable Company are just better. <laughs> <laughs> the and Sable Company get to oh. fly. The Sable Company get to take on all of the enemies <laughs> in Corvosa in every way possible. The Sable Company get the best training they get. Well, spectacular gear like this. I mean, you've seen the Quartermaster. Uh, But all the same, even though the guard is worse, we appreciate the work they do. And, but, you know, we always, we gotta, we can't let them get too ahead of themselves. They have to remember who's the best. So that's what it's all about. You know, it's it's, just brotherly ribbing, right? It's like, this is, this is the little brother who thinks he can do things. And sometimes he can, but sometimes you have to remind him. So isn't the little brothers normally the favorites? The younger child is normally the favorite, at least in my experience. So that would make the Sable companies the favorites. They would be the younger child. Uh, you could certainly think it that way, but um, you're wrong. I mean, <laughs> usually when it, in my culture, when it's involving the favorite children, it just means that they get the pile of meat first. You would watch the Corvosan God do everything wrong, and as the younger child follow behind them and do everything right. Yeah, you would think that'd be how it worked, but no, the card has never figured it out. They still keep trying to do things their way. Well, it's because you was a younger child. They was the older child. But yet we're better. Yes, because you was a younger child. It doesn't work that way. That's how it works. No, I, don't I think promise so. you. I think you're just a bad family. A bad family? Oh. Certainly not. You can't have brothers that get along all the time. Mm. That then they never try anything new. One of them is going to be better at stuff. It just works out that way. That is how it works out. I mean, there's a reason why I'm an only child now. Now? That's <laughs> Goblin culture. I don't you say more. I, I hope not. <laughs> I don't have the story. But the, uh, the group of you here uh, within the set and on, I mean, Darren now with his shiny new trident to uh, try out here, and John seemingly very enthused to, to aid him. Uh, there isn't much time left in the day for you to seek anything major so unless there's something else that you were all after this particular afternoon uh, i imagine much of the rest of the day would pass without incident uh either here in the citadel or heading back to your own homes Uh, um oh sorry no go ahead um well floblin is probably uh going to um he doesn't really have too much to do. I mean, he's already had his big breakfast. Gotta go find a nice, a nice dumpster. Yeah. Um, I, originally, I was thinking about, I'll just go to my dumpster. But actually, what he's going to do is he's actually really concerned with uh, Arden's nephew. And he's uh, going to get with Arden and see if, like, 
I don't know if they can sit down and make some sort of game plan on where to, you know, start with their search. Oh, okay. So you, you he would, Flub would, would spend some time with you. So John and Darren are off of playing with this trident, having a, playing with Darren's new toy, having a good time. Uh, Floblin and Arden are trying to use what uh, admittedly little information that you'd learned from Orisini to try to f- figure out any way that you could find Lamb's son. So, what would the breath what would you be doing with your afternoon and your evening? There's a nice bottle of whiskey I gotta acquaint myself with. That's <laughs> valid point, sir. It's having a great time. <laughs> You're welcome. Um, <laughs> but the rest of the evening and the night uh, would pass without further incident. Uh, you would get no word. I don't know if you're going, if you care at all to investigate what had befallen your drunken friend. I would ask. Nobody would, uh, yeah, nobody would contact you or anything. I would go find someone to talk to because I'm curious. There wouldn't be much that you would hear other than these, uh, the guard, uh, everyone within Citadel, Bolshevik at this point, would have very quickly learned of who you brought back. Uh, and you not being of Corvosa at all uh, may not have really understood like the tier of watch captain. Uh, but this man, what uh, Captain Grau that you brought back, what's his name? Would have basically only been outranked by Field Marshal Croft oh. within the Citadel. He was uh, where she oversees basically the operations of the Corvosan Guard at large. The watch captain is directly responsible for all the operations of the Citadel itself. Um, he has the full authority over every facet of Citadel Bolshevik's operation. Again, only superseded by the field marshal herself. This is not just some guy. Uh, especially having come back that same day with uh, Sergeant Van Kaskerken, and you know, not being a military man yourself, it could be easy for, I imagine, John to not really see the difference, like the huge gulf between sergeant and captain. Sergeant's like a step above a list enlisted guy. He's, he is exactly one rung up that ladder. But Captain Grau, this was huge news that he had been pulled back in by the random mercenaries <laughs> that had been sent from Castle Corvosa. This is a big fish. Somehow. A very good fisher. Truly impressive fish indeed but beyond that none of them would know anything that had uh, had happened with him or what was going to happen with him as he would have gone directly to the field marshal herself uh who would be dealing with this matter personally uh this is a circumstance that kind of falls outside of the traditional status uh, uh, procedure of things, especially given the situation of the city and the Citadel and how understaffed the guard is at the moment. It would be a very different thing than what happened with Sergeant Van Kaskerken, who more or less just kind of gets disappeared once you get him back. Uh, He is... Well, I mean, they want to learn what they could about why he defected and what's going on and they're going to learn what they can and then he is going to go to Corvos in prison somewhere. Probably. I think so. Yeah, of course. Yeah. yeah. Out of sight, out of mind. Out of sight, out of mind. But resting in the Citadel would awaken the next morning uh, to a guard arriving with a message once again. Uh, Fairly early on in the morning, but not so early that it would be awakening the group. You, as you were preparing, uh, the man would stop by each of the two barracks chambers that you had claimed as a group and uh, let you all know, uh, Field Marshal Croft has more business for you. Uh, Not now, but you'll need to meet her about an hour before sundown up in her office. Sundown? Before sundown? Indeed. Oh, all right. Late this eve. All right, all right. It's apparently... uh, Meeting a contact and it won't be available until then. Hmm. Hmm. So ready yourselves and be available. All right. All right. Should we should we wait till then to ask her about the the warrant or should we? I think that would be probably best to wrap all the all the business with her in one meeting. Huh. No all point right. in dragging it out. Get it all done. Besides, I would get tired of seeing your faces multiple times throughout the day. Her face? Your face. My face. Your faces. 
We go together. You see our face all day. We well, go in one big meeting throughout the entire day, but to split it up multiple times, just go somewhere. Go like something. if you had to keep on asking somebody something every five minutes. Okay. Ah, from her perspective. Yes. I missed that bit. Okay. Yes. That's his. Thank, thank you, that's <clears throat> But, uh, John, the field marshal wants to speak with you directly. Okay. Ooh. Oh, did I not tell you about the man I brought in yesterday? Who? I found the captain of the watch. What? Yes. What? You, brought... what? You, you found him? Well, he found me, and then I brought him here. Was he missing? Apparently. Apparently. So I'll go see her as soon as I... Zan was his prayer. Indeed. Uh, whenever it is, you're available. Uh, and uh, the guard would take his leave and leave you to your morning rituals. Huh. Oh. Huh. Well, found him. Yes. Well, he found me. He thought I was his best friend from Sandpoint. Wow. You you know him, huh? I didn't know you were from Sandpoint. Yes. Apparently, my name is Nephi now. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Who? I'm Ooh. sorry. I, nice it's to meet it's you, a Nephi. long story. Now, then in the room and just start a prayer. So should I should I call him Nephi now? Is that what I, I should guess do? that's his name. Right. I thought it was John. I thought it was John. Too. Maybe it was like a nickname or something. <laughs> well, I know all day. I'm going to go to the mess hall for a quick Average snack if anyone wants to join me. Well, <laughs> well, now, wait a minute. Well, what, what, before you go, what time is it? Because I don't want you to get hit in the, with a frying pan for a third time. The morning would be one of the safe times. Okay, all right, all right, so we're good, we're good. They would have the three square meals. I only got hit in the head once. It's not eight o'clock yet. Yeah, between <laughs> sun, uh, right as uh, sunrise dawns and for about an hour afterward, the mess hall will be available for the morning's meal. He's not going to get bonked this time. There'll be at least oh. like the other four or five guards that are available in there as well that aren't currently posted up at the gatehouse. I think it just depends on the mood of the, the cook. I mean, he might get bonked anyway, but if he does, it's entirely his own fault. <laughs> well, I'll join you. Well, we'll have, to, we'll have to... Roy, it's always great to eat bacon with a friend. I'm just going to stare at this trident while I eat. <laughs> you bringing it with you into the mess Totally hall? am. Yeah, you guys have definitely made some weird waves throughout the, like, dozen personnel that are still in the Citadel. Uh, maybe two dozen. There's not many total. Uh... Between somehow discovering the watch captain and now, you know, getting handed a sable company <laughs> trident. You know, Darren, I, I know Flom said something about it being a fork, but I don't think you can actually eat off of that. It might be a little awkward. I mean, I think you can. Sounds like a challenge. <laughs> well, if you could put something between them, you could use it like a big spoon, sort of. Just kind of feed yourself like a horse or something. Are you, like, assuming I'm going to eat peas with this or something? <laughs> well, you got to eat something bigger than a slice of bacon with it. Yeah, probably like a chicken or something. I could totally like spear a, whole a chicken. chicken with this. A yeah, whole a whole chicken. chicken. Spear you know, it, roast it. Okay, I was about to say, you going to at least cook it on there? Well, of course, I'm not a savage. I mean... You're going to be cooking and eating a, a chicken... A chicken. On the same... So oh, John. <laughs> <laughs> but you're not a savage. As you uh, make your way, not to the mess hall, but I assume first up to the field marshal's office, uh, you would be let in and see Field Marshal Croft sat behind her desk uh, with some more uh, wider spread of papers and ledgers in front of her than usual, uh, as well as a large uh, bright steel square shield uh, perched on the opposite side of her desk, uh, emblazoned with the massive uh, sigil of the Corvosan guard uh, painted across the front of it. And she would look up and see you and just motion, oh, yes, uh, come in. Good morning. As to you. I've, well, I've heard some very interesting things about your adventure yesterday, and truth be told, I'd like to hear them from your mouth. What happened? And how did you come across Captain Grau? So, you see, I was walking down... Uh, darn, I forget which route it was, but I was going to hitting pawn shops. I'm looking for a very... And all of a sudden, he didn't look close to me, but he confused me for his friend, Effie. And so I just played along, took him to a bar, talked, and then he slipped out that he was Captain of the Guard, so we bar hopped our way back here. I figured you would want any deserter, as you said, as when you took us on. Captain Grau's been missing since, well, the riots immediately after the loss of the king. 
We hadn't heard absolutely anything about him in the time since then, and honestly, I feared the worst. I, truth be told, never expected to see him again. I don't know that I can properly impress to you how much of a boon you've done for the Corvos and Guard, and for me personally. This... And she kind of stops for a second to gather her thoughts, kind of compose her words. I know this has all been thrust upon you and your friends very rapidly here. Yeah, that you've... And we're, of course, more than grateful for your willingness to aid us and to aid the city of Corvosa, which to my understanding is not even your city. Uh, you're being paid for it, obviously, but you're putting your life on the line for a city and a people that you barely know. He figures while I'm here, might as well do something good. Then whether it by chance or divine providence or however else now, Captain Grau has been returned to the Citadel by your hand. I... I truly don't know how properly to express my gratitude. You can say thank you. <laughs> thank you is not nearly going to encompass what you are due, John Tiller. But this... This is, and the, see, your, your gaze falls over to the shield. This is perhaps the best that I can do at the moment. I, I feel it fitting. Uh, given the situation in Corvosa, we have a fair sight more equipment than we have personnel to issue it to. And though, unfortunately, I'm afraid this will aid you little in your operation that you'll be undertaking this evening and this night, Ideally, it may protect you anywhere else in the city or in further operations that you follow for the Guard of Corvosa. There's a watchman's shield. Watch sergeants. An enchanted one. It's sturdier than it appears. Damn near impenetrable steel. It's okay for me to have this. As I said, uh, honestly, given the state of things, I think less goods for the quartermaster to have to keep track of and constantly obsess over maybe better for all of us truth be told as you are doing what continue to be more and more unbelievable tears of success for the city of corvosa it's the least i can do to issue you some modicum more equipment to protect yourself i mean i don't i'm not so i draw i'm turning a little flush because he has no idea how to process any of this information i if you I'm not going to say no, that's what you read, but are you sure? Positive. I, I mean, if, if you don't want it, you are by all rights welcome to refuse, but it is, well, standard issue for watch sergeants, and given the undertakings of you and uh, the rest of your group that had come from Castle Corvosa, that is honestly about the closest to the role you've been performing for us so far. I will, I, will, I will take it. Yes, yes, it is. Just bringing in a man? Captain Grau is not just a man, Mr. Tiller. Well, apparently so. Well, then, is there anything else you'll need from me? Or... Uh, absolutely will. Uh, did the messenger not reach you this morning? He told us to meet you tonight. Indeed. I'll have, I have a task that has come to me from another friend outside of the Corvos and Guard. Uh, it'll be best to have him on hand to explain it, and he won't be around until near nightfall. It'll be an operation that's probably more wisely undertaken during the night anyway. So you may want to rest up for much of the day and prepare yourselves as well as you can. You can tell your friends that as well. All right, I will, I will pass on the message and kind of take the shield. It's a pretty hefty shield. Uh, it is a square steel plate uh, with a bolted rim around it, but it's not not quite as large as a full kite or a traditional square shield, which while called that is really more of a pretty vertical rectangle. Uh, this is almost literally a perfect flat square, but significantly larger and heavier than a buckler. Certainly something that you could not just strap onto your wrist and would need to be wielded. Uh, though, given the clear bulk as you look at it, uh, picking it up, it's not exceptionally heavy. In, in fact, it doesn't feel uh, that much more obtrusive, even just, just picking it up to hold it 
than if you were just holding a much smaller buckler or even a small heater or a similar shield of wooden make, which would be much lighter. Uh, the emblem of the Corosan Guard painted upon its surface, the only thing breaking the polished, shining uh, square of metal is... I mean, it looks, if such a thing existed, like it was printed. It, there's no visible hand stroke or anything. It is an almost strangely flawless shield. Uh, clearly the hallmarks of an item with some amount of magic behind it. And uh, for simplicity, even though she herself would be unable to detail you exactly the specifics of its magic, it is just purely mechanical shield more shielder. It is a minor sturdy shield. Okay. With watercolor painting. It doesn't do anything that you couldn't do with a regular shield, but it is, as she said, more resilient than a shield of its type should be. It will protect you better from harm, and it is harder to destroy. It is shield Much harder. Plus. What? It is shield plus. It is shield plus. There's a plus one. To this. <laughs> Basically what that is, yeah. Now, uh, and as you take it, she continues. Now, I know, based on most of the equipment that I've seen you bear, that you are not typically one for a shield in battle, which is... Truth be told, part of why I think it may be wise to issue you one. <laughs> <laughs> Idiot. <laughs> it was, I've never had a lot of use for a shield. We've never really used one, so I don't really know the proper... I mean, it's not exactly hard to use, but... Well, you'll find the use of a shield is quite intuitive and incredibly valuable. You put it in between you and the things that want to do you harm. That is what's the goblins for, though. That's a joke. That was she, a joke. She <laughs> smirks at that and just kind of looks down. He actually does a very good job at standing between you and the person trying to stab you. Well, perhaps you can put the shield between him and the person trying to stab him. Yes, that actually might be wise. Anyway, well, that won't aid you in your operation tonight. And in fact, it would be unwise to even bring with you this evening. Again, I'll explain more as the time is. Uh, you may want to relax through most of this morning, this afternoon. I'll see you about an hour before sundown when my friend arrives. Sounds excellent. I will see you then. This one knows the proper salute, so I just bow. And uh, as he clearly kind of shuffling, it's like you're not in any official capacity for the Kavosan Guard. You need not worry about particular official salutes. It is fine. All right, then. Well, then, I'm going to go get breakfast. I'm hungry. Just shuffle out of the room. Shiny shield. And you make your way down with uh, possibly the opposite of a Sable Company Trident, which is a Corvosan Watch Sergeant Square Shield, uh, down to join your friends in the mess hall, probably about as they're finishing up. Well, so we have... The fork and the plate. The fork and the plate. <laughs> so when do I get a bandit's knife with clear, like, criminal markings on it so we can have all three factions? <laughs> What exactly are clear criminal markings? Like a symbol. It uh, still has the, the tag on it. Like yeah, a big frowny tag. face. It has the spider tag on a it. Saw, uh, a sawtooth saber. A big frowny face. Is this... I like to think it has a, the, the spider clamp, the security yeah. thing. They're supposed to remove it the register, but you yeah. just stole it, so it still has the thing on or it. Or the yeah. ink pack. Yeah. <laughs> the little ink pack hang <laughs> on the arm of the handle of the knife. <laughs> I guess there are a wide variety of evil deities <laughs> that you could just have on there. Like you could have, yeah, Norgorber probably makes the easiest. Oh, yeah, amount sawtooth of sense. saber is pretty the iconic. Red mantis sword, <laughs> sawtooth knife. There you go. Just kind of sit down at the at the. I get my food and then sit down at the table and just kind of look at the shield. Well, Lang, look at you. I got this. She gave me a shield for bringing a man back. There's a watch captain, I guess. Uh, he's, he's, it's, it's... Is it a man? It's the watch captain. Oh, the watch captain. Got it. That would be why. He's, he's, it's not just some sergeant. It's the watch captain. She, she made a joke about me not using a shield, and it probably wise I use a shield. That probably would be a good idea, actually. Yes. Like, I thought, I think I made a joke about Flublin being the shield. What? I'm not a shield. He's he likes, not. He likes to stand between you and the guy trying to stab you. That only happened once. Oh, well, that's more than enough. Well, he, actually, thankfully, it's not because he not. threw him behind me. I stood, I stood in front of him as the shield. Well, you're gonna need that shield because next time you get blood, I'm helping you get. Well, okay, I mean, that that's pretty quickly. Is that, <laughs> he's he, just very he's pouty, shoving more bacon in his mouth. He's the one that 
wraps me up the last time I got bloodied. Well, Floblin, I really appreciate your work. Please continue. Thank you, Devin. I would be crocodile food if it weren't for you Floblin's would, help. You actually would be. Cro you actually have done a very little job on him. And I appreciate it. And that is very good. It's one less than. Right. Don't forget it. Yep. That's right. I forgot. I'm watching you. <laughs> you tried to. Yeah, do it. Like, wait. <laughs> this is where we learn that Floblin actually has both his eyes. He forgot to act. <laughs> no, you see, that eye got eaten by a raccoon. Are you sure? I feel like you was just wearing the eye patch because you'll think it looks cool. No, no, no. I, I when I was when I was a wee little goblin, I got into a fight with a pa uh, with a raccoon, and uh, well, What's he ate my eyeball, but I got my trash, so What's it's it a win-win for me. Sounds like it was a win-win for the both of you. <laughs> <laughs> so, as the uh, morning progresses and you each are filling the mess hall here, uh, John could certainly share the news that whatever operation was going to be happening was something that was going to take place during the night. Uh, is there anything that the group of you would be doing with your mornings or your day here before you meet with the field marshal again later this evening? Um, well, I have an idea, actually. Um... So, uh, John, I know you've you've been really focused on this ring here, but maybe more more hands could make it go quicker. Can you give me a description of the oh, ring, awesome. and I can go look in pawn shops too? I mean, we literally have nothing better to do today. Did I not? I did not. I am stupid. I am very stupid. And I, John is actually gonna reach in. He's gonna pull out a simple, uh, not simple, an iron band on a on a string. You it had it the whole time. No, this is a replica made by a child's hand. Um, the ring is one of a kind heirloom to my family. Normally the eldest child gets it, but my mother decided to give it to my younger sister instead. My younger sister, though, being the kind hearted soul she is, had a replica made out of simple iron. Huh. And it's, it's a band, it's, it looks so cheap. It's, um, supposed to look like it's woven, woven metal coming into a, a, a piece where a gym would sit, but there is no gym set into it. Was this made by a child or was this made by John? <laughs> uh, John's sibling. Okay. Fair. So, I don't know if that was just the excuse for like, this is made by a child. <laughs> <laughs> a child is, yes. So does the gold ring actually have a stone set in it or is it just it's, an empty setting? It is a stone set in it. You know how hard it is to find a setting stone for a ring like that as a like, I'm just asking. I know you are. I know you're not that dumb. Um, but yes, it's, it's it's almost like a deep a deep amethyst. Okay. Okay. So it's a gold ring that looks like this, kind of woven, yes. kind of like this. Okay. Okay. Um, and I, Darren's going to spend some time taking down like what this ring looks like, maybe even make some rubbings of the patterns on the surface. Um, if there's any, check for any engravings. Are there any engravings or is it? Just, like you never got a chance to give this, so there's no engravings on there's it. There's no engravings. Okay, okay, perfect. So let's just keep, I'll just keep track of all that. It's, that would be actually very helpful. And then I can help Odin find his nephew in the meantime. Sounds like a balanced trade. It sounds like a balanced trade. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure your nephew is alive. <laughs> <laughs> One ring. Um. Yes. So, anyways. What is the plan for the day? She said to rest and not to do anything extraneous. I would recommend not running into drunks on the road. It is incredibly mentally exhausting. Well, it's apparently quite profitable, though. <sighs> I mean, how many? Uh, thankfully, there's only one watch captain who's missing, but. Well, there's nothing that says we can't just sit around here and loaf about. Well, I'm going to go swing my new trident around. That's... That, that, that seems like it's, it's, oh, it's actual effort. Stuff. <laughs> I'm well, actually going to talk to the quartermaster. I might need to change equipment around to fit the shields. Oh, take oh, Arden with you. And, and take my sword with you. I don't want, I don't need to give it back to him, but I don't want to look at him. I Wait. think you should give it back to him. No, right, I think he would right. get very mad if a man who did not request the weapon brought the weapon back. Uh, uh, yeah, I, I think you have a point. <sighs> Thank you. I just really don't want to deal with that. I'll let you go first, and then I'll go in after you. Fine. <laughs> Right, well, while you all are playing with your toys, I'm going to be doing my morning prayers to Lebaiko. And uh, Alden, if you want to go over the plan later with me, I'll be in the mess hall later. I, I, I'm going to find a map of the city. P -p Presumably they have one. That would not be difficult to acquire, yeah, either here within the Citadel or with a very brief excursion out to the town outside. Arden is successful when he's hunting because he knows the terrain. And he doesn't know, know the terrain here, so he wants to get to know it. Fair enough. Um, you have, yeah, right outside the center of Bolshevik, you have High Bridge and then Pillar Hill, which is 
Yeah, Pillar Hill is basically just downtown Corvosa. It is like the super cosmopolitan uh, main shopping district. For like, so there's you get you're right in near everything. Even though the Citadel is perched on the very southern end of the city, near the high bridge that stretches across the east shore, you are. Well, the south side of the city is basically where all of this stuff is. Uh, that's where Castle Corvosa is. That's where the Sable Company training grounds. That's where Citadel Bolshevik. It's pretty much all down here. The north do you go? Well, it's not the north you go the worst if it gets because the, the area near the North Bridge is fine too. But you have access to basically everything pretty much right outside. And they have jewelers and goldsmiths around here too? Absolutely. Um, it's very much so in Pillar Hill. Actually. Uh, Okay, um, I'll, I'll grab some maps and, and I'll make a note of where uh, some, some of those things are to, to tell Darren and, and John in case maybe it got it got sold to one of them. That's a good idea. And, and then I'll, I'll, I'll come back. Okay. But, but I'm going to be studying those maps. So you're out with the maps and looking around. You two are into the armor. Floblin and Reth, what are you guys doing? Loafing about. Chilling. Um, I was going to do my morning prayers and then... Uh, Breakfast came first. <laughs> Breakfast, <laughs> then prayer. prayer. Breakfast, then prayer. And then, um, like I said, if uh, Arden wanted to come see me after I did my prayer, I thought to try and find his nephew, he could. Otherwise, I'm just going to bide my time until we go do our mission. Yeah, after your prayers, you would definitely find that Arden would be gone because he went out uh, to town to uh, do all well, also that, chilling. He was spouting <laughs> off something about marking maps and learning the terrain. I think he might be lost again. Uh, probably knowing him, it is. Um, in that case, what are you doing? Loafing. You want to burn some trash with me? Probably not. <laughs> <laughs> I reckon that'd probably get me in trouble. Oh, no, no you're gonna... just paying tribute to the Labico, and Labico will keep you alive. No one's going to bat an eye at you doing it, but if I'm doing it, they're probably going to raise at least a couple questions. <laughs> Not with that giant cannon on your back. That's going to raise more questions. <laughs> <laughs> if you do it, it's fine. We, they expect, you have no expectations. People are going to be disappointed if I'm doing it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, the two of you, uh, John and Darren, head into the armory uh, where you make your entrance and uh, immediately already at the counter... Uh, working in some ledgers is the quartermaster who looks up at the pair of you and immediately just looks back down at his ledgers and keeps is writing. He, I don't... I think I have... It didn't mean to do this right now. Returning this, put the longsword on the counter. He takes it under through the uh, gap in the grating, uh, looking over its handle and it's scabbard without even unsheathing it. Why, did you just take it outside and swing it around in a pig trough? What? That's actually kind of, I think. You didn't swing it in the trick truck, did you? You just I swung it at an imp once. The cap uh. on the top of the scabbard here is starting to fray. The stitching down the sides losing a bit. The base of this looks like it's seriously just been used to unclog somebody's plumbing. Would you run this through an O2 in the sewers? I, I, I don't I, even pull the blade out. I don't know out. what that is. I don't want to do it while you're still here. I don't know that I can trust myself. And uh, <laughs> he puts it on that same rack Honestly, that behind him. That was fairly painless and, as far as most of these interactions it, go. It looks perfectly fine. <laughs> just bring it in like you have, I assume, maintained this perfectly well. And you have barely done anything with it. It looks absolutely <laughs> fine. Um, but he puts it back up. All right, so I imagine it took the two of you to carry this sword back in. All right, Zen. I'm going to go into town yeah, and buy. Go, <laughs> uh, go buy my own weapons and just not deal with this man at all. I mean, it, uh, come on. He's right here. You, uh, you came with me. No, no, I'm no, here no, for, no. I'll stay in the room for moral support. See, this, what, I'm thinking, <laughs> what I'm thinking is I have a short sword already. I you was do. thinking about getting a long sword, but you know, I'm really partial to the short sword. Oh, a long sword. Is that what you're after? Hold on. I got just the thing. He turns around and grabs it. I walk away. <laughs> I just walk away. Puts it on the counter as you're leaving. I'll oh. give it to him. Don't, Why? Don't take it. Did I have to be included in this? Because I was under the impression that you'd ha you would throw a fit if someone else brought my sword in. Well, I can't entirely fault you for your logic. Uh, these have been issued to the group of you. Given the class of your delegation here, you are fundamentally, as far as I'm concerned, one unit. I don't have your names. I don't care about your names. You're the Queensman. Well, dang, that's easy. Hey, John, wait, wait up. <laughs> Gee golly, that was easier than I expected. As you, you turn it immediately going after yeah. 
Thanks for brightening my morning as always. <laughs> <laughs> Next time we'll bring you cupcakes. <laughs> I just learned we don't have to talk to him about stuff like this anymore. We just send flobbling. I can just give you the sword, and he doesn't care. And just if we don't want it anymore, we just give it to Floblin, and he takes it back. Yeah, I like that. I like that too. I like that. All right, then. Can you imagine he just sees the hair coming towards him? <laughs> just in the distance, Floblin is sneezing. It's like, eh, why is it? Why does I get the sneaky suspicion someone's talking about me? <laughs> Somewhere in a dumpster. Yeah. <laughs> Who would be talking about flop? Another weapon onto the repertoire. <laughs> How many weapons do you are you carrying? Like seven, right? Mm. Eventually you won't need armor because you'll have so much steel across your body, you'll just be in full plate. It's like ever seen the the rogue whose leather armor is entirely made of belts. Yep. <laughs> That's just Marie Seal. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> it's entirely made well, of Well, it's sixty percent belts and forty percent knives. <laughs> knives. <laughs> That's just Mauricio, the iconic rogue. <laughs> I don't like that it's taking you this Five, long. Short sword, javelin, five times, long spear, sap, long sword, and then a shield. What's your freaking bulk capacity? 9.7 is what I'm at. My encumbered is at 11. My maximum is 16. Oh, you have hefty, hefty hauler? hauler? Yeah, I have hefty hauler. Uh, I'm prepared for this. It doesn't work because most of your weapons are pretty small. You have like a sap and a short sword and javelins and things Dude, that are Dude, you could add nothing. like 20 daggers. I mean, he... <laughs> you could add 29 daggers. <laughs> because the nine don't count as weight. You're not wrong. This is John Double Homicide Tiller. He has a reputation to uphold. There's the no way reputation. you could beat him is a rogue could sneak another into his pocket. He'd just fall over. He just he's walking and immediately just starts clunking. <laughs> Why has my speed been reduced? I don't understand. <laughs> Somebody slipped a dagger into my pocket. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, with that, you two, I imagine, have the morning and uh, the afternoon to work with your weapons. Reth and Flabla not doing much of anything. And uh, Arden kind of getting a lay of the land and asking around, uh, searching the local pawn shops of the area. The group of you would reconvene back in Sadadal Volshevik in the late afternoon, not long before uh, the sunset was due to come, a little more than an hour, hypothetically, remaining. Uh, about due for your meeting with Field Marshal Croft. Uh, and making your way up to her office as a group once more, uh, the five of you would enter to see her standing in front of her desk, uh, still with the same bright red breastplate that she has always borne, uh, but next to her, uh, what looks to be a nobleman, maybe in his mid-thirties, relatively pale skin, a long, very well manicured mustache extending out a few inches past his lips to fine points, uh, clearly waxed and maintained, uh, the very short, cropped, fine beard that he has. Uh, his hair, somewhat similar, uh, all, all of this dark brown, Kind of accenting the red vest that he has over a self insert. <laughs> I, I feel like it this is. is <laughs> this is the. Uh, how I view myself. This is. <laughs> <laughs> I would like to raise. That is just Nick. If you remove the facial hair. No, that's Squid. If you give uh, him the mustache. That is that is that this is, is this is my self squid. insert AU that I have added to our Christmas <laughs> own conversion. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Look, shut up. He's literally on the other page. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry. I guess your nose is a little bigger. Huh? There's guys yeah, quite a. A relatively a... small kind of nose. Does yeah. He? yeah, his nose is really small for his face. I are don't like it. Are you looking at the same picture I am? Well, I'm looking at it from a different perspective than you are. He, uh, because his, his hair is also kind of honestly kept up very similar to how I wear mine. Yeah, I, I know, that's um, what's creeping me out a little. It Just, makes his face there, appear a bit longer. A it gives him more space that yeah, by yeah. comparison makes his nose look a little bit smaller. God, like even your ears are positioned almost exactly the same. Like most I... people's ears are positioned generally no. the same. Not really. One of my ears folds out further than the other. Derp actually has really small ears for his head. I have a large head. Do you have small ears? He we does. I'm looking at everyone's ears. <laughs> We're back to pregame. Back to this man. I got a spiky thing in mine. <laughs> I can wiggle my ears. <laughs> Alright, so this man this, is, this man's this name is falling is, apart with great rapidity. <laughs> <laughs> man's name is AJ, It would be a right? two perception show if it wasn't. The group of you enter uh, to see Field Marshal Croft uh, before her desk talking to this man, and both of them turn towards the door as the group of you enter. 
And uh, the field marshal waves you in as the man folds it up in front of him and bows deeply and uh, in a perfectly trained, traditional noble greeting. Uh, very kind of rigid, exactly down to the correct heights. Not that any of you trained in your society would really recognize such a thing beyond perhaps having... Uh, having uh, it looks clearly trained. Mm-hmm. It's not just a guy kind of bowing his head. Or looks he looks smooth. like a chicken pecking at the ground. How far do you think a bow goes? <laughs> John doesn't know. <laughs> but uh, he comes back up with a smile as the group of you enter. Ah, fantastic. These are the storied heroes of, the ca- of Castle Corvosa who have risen as a bright shining light in the darkness that has encompassed our fair city. We're storied? We're heroes? I've heard a great many stories of the group of you. Indeed, a small number of them from my friend Croft here. Um, and he, he, he looks over to her kind of pausing with a smile. It's I understand it's it's official capacity, but it's just so strange to address you directly by your surname. Are you sure? And she and she just stops and puts a hand up. Well, uh, kind of also with a grin. Yes, Field Marshal Croft. Thank you. Uh, 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 thank you, Akuminos. And he kind of nods. Of course, of course. I have heard a great amount about your escapades throughout the city in the sca- uh, in the scarce few days. Simple news of the passing of our fair king, Adred the Second. I heard that most recently you were for bringing the Watch Captain back to the castle. Uh, and I'll have you know that Captain Grau, I suppose, as he smiles back over the field marshal, uh, was a dear, close, personal friend of mine. So I thank you personally for that service. And I, as I'm sure Field Marshal Croft has as well for your service with the Corvallis and Guard. Was a, that was mostly nephews doing. I feel like I'm missing something. Mm-hmm in this situation. I'm sorry, I get ahead of myself here. Uh, Arim and Akuminos at your service. And I have some interesting information, I believe, given the state of things in Corvosa, that the field marshal here has seen fit to delegate to the group of you. And after everything I've heard, it seems that you are an incredibly fine and capable sort of folk. You were able to return in the space of just a small handful of hours, not just a single deserted sergeant, but an entire group back to the Citadel. And uh, at this point, Croft kind of puts her hands up. Look, as much as I would enjoy continuing this conversation here, I fear we just don't have the time. Uh, Kuminos has learned uh, something that could degrade into sanctions, embargoes, or even possibly outright war with the nation of Cheliax were allowed to continue. Hmm. Oh. And this is something that Corvosa ill needs well, she certainly has enough problems on her plate, given the state of succession. This problem is a man named Darvain Giosampre. He is an ambassador from Cheliax whose disdain for Corvosa is more than well documented. Even though he's taken great pleasure in what our city has to offer him in his time here, before this recent unrest, he was ready to recommend his government a sanction on trade with the city of Corvosa, perhaps even a direct embargo. Uh, Kuminos here has learned through his own considerable sources that Ambassador Ampere's actual goals are to undermine Corvosa's economy to the point where he can buy up large portions of the city from desperate landlords. He sees the city of Corvosa as nothing more than an economic opportunity to line his own coffers. He sounds like an enemy of the state. Can't we just revoke his diplomatic appropriate privileges and send him back home? Can't we just kill him? Here is the difficulty. Given his status as an ambassador to the nation of Cheliax and one acting in an official capacity for the House Throne, we can take no drastic action. We certainly could not kill him. He would be nothing more than a martyr in the eyes of Cheliax, and his death would serve to advance any tensions among our city and that much larger nation more than we can try to handle right now. Even direct action on behalf of the Corvos and Guard intervening directly could be seen as a misuse of diplomatic protocol. Hmm. He is a protected asset. There's hmm. nothing we can do. Well, there's nothing we can do officially. That's why you need us. So you're saying you want us to leave these badges here and go ask this man some questions? And uh, she looks over towards John. Do you have the shield with you? If you come, do you, I don't I've, know how geared I've, you are as you come. I, if we're in the Citadel, I have most of my stuff is just sitting That's in the bags. I, I keep the scythe with me and the short sword. And she would look over. You see now why I had advised against... I uh, uh, had apologized perhaps that that shield would not bear you any good in your operations this evening. Unfortunately, uh, this is going to be something that is indeed a bit more cloak and dagger. 
I would advise that you not only hide your badges, but perhaps leave them entirely within your with your belongings in the barracks here in the city. Mm. Say no more. He takes all his and just call. I don't think that's. Um, never mind. That we'll find steal. it later. Don't worry. Anyway, <laughs> what, is, what is in your mouth? Spit it out. Spit it out. Fortunately for us, the ambassador Ow. has his vices. And uh, she nods over towards Akuminos, and he says, Right! And his vices are a great many, near innumerable indeed. Interesting uh, a range of pleasures and tastes that our fair ambassador has. The problem being that he, well, affords a fair bit of discretion given his position and the size of his coin purse. That said, I've heard he's been making fairly regular visits to a place up in Old Corvosa known as Eels Inn. This is a den of vice run by a very dangerous man known as the King of Spiders. Oh, we met him. No, we no, didn't. No, we didn't. Well, we sort of met him. We met his guys. We his, were on a his ship. His doormen kicked us out. We were doing some investigations. Oh, well, fantastic. Already, already familiar with the place then. Wonderful. Uh, see, what you didn't have, I imagine at the time, was a heavy coin purse. And that's exactly the kind of thing that might aid us in getting the King of Spiders' attention. We're going to hit him with it? Well, I would probably advise against that, but I suppose after everything I've heard, you are the experts, and, well, you will do as you see fit, whatever you you see the easiest uh, direct way to deal with things. And uh, the field marshal... Apply force. The field marshal... (laughs) It's all she can do to not roll her eyes at this. As she audibly sighs, look... I would honestly, absolutely love to put Powers, as his name is. Uh, he rejected his his uh, birth name pretty rapidly after his ascension to a criminal enterprise, as he saw it as a source of embarrassment. Perhaps understandably so. Uh, though he is not just a rightful figure amongst the underground of Corvosa, he is, by birth, a well-appointed noble in his own right. What? Uh, Sir Powers, as he is, pays his vice taxes quite regularly, never causes any direct problems for the city, and has never given us anything well, direct or otherwise as reason to do anything about him. Hmm. Honestly, truth be told, he keeps his business contained entirely within the ships moored up at Eel's End, and he's honestly one of the always been one of the, the guard's least worries. He runs, pardon the. Uh, part of the idiom, a very tight ship. Uh, <laughs> well, I'm really confused now. Basically, it's another corrupted pa- man of power. I say, Think about Lamb, but if he wasn't such a dick. <laughs> it's, it's a nobleman who's just decided to do criminal things. So is the, is, is the suggestion that uh, since he values his standing with the government so much that we approach him and ask him to help co-opt our efforts against this ambassador? And Akuminos puts up a finger. Not exactly. Uh, honestly, Powers would never let somebody recognize as an ally of the Guard into Eel's End at all. Uh, but your group here, as the <laughs> Field Marshal Croft, and he smiles every single time he says it, uh, has so rightfully put, is a very different case. You are an unknown quantity. You are functionally a group of mercenaries, and hopefully news of your exploits has not traveled that far beyond the bounds of Citadel Vlachevic. Uh, ideally, you could visit Eelzind, secure an audience with the Spider King, find out what he knows about our amb- ambassador, and acquire some proof of any of his illicit goings on in his three hours throughout the night. Hmm. Okay. And uh, Field Marshal nods. If you can acquire anything solid, anything physical, writing, actionable, secure it, bring it to me and that we can use that as leverage to undermine any forthcoming attempts that he might have to get Cheliax to cut, cut us off. So. Now, the King of Spiders, as he apparently titles himself now, may not be terribly willing to part with this information easily, but I'll, supp- I'll supply you with a purse to use to bribe him. Remember, <laughs> Sir Powers is dangerous, but from what you've proven so far, you are as well. If things get violent, I certainly would not mourn his passing. Quick hmm. question. Uh, quick question, if I may. Um, would my lore underworld help with maybe some ideas how we can bait or like get a meeting with uh, the spider by chance? 
You can give me, yeah, give me a lore underworld here. That's a pretty decent number. That is 18 on a die. Pay so that, him. Uh, 20, yeah, 23. I mean, besides paying him, but I would I would figure a more proper social approach, uh, like, you know, what kind of deal is he looking for and whatever. Um, but you, but, I suppose, realistically would know that he is, yeah, he is, he is not Gadron Lamb. The King of Spiders, uh, Sir Manly Powers, as is his full, uh, properly given name. <laughs> is that seriously his full name? Sir his Manly actual Powers. name. Wow. wow. She forsook Nier immediately to become the King of Spiders. I can't Sir imagine Manly why. Manly I now understand his descent into the underworld. Hmm. Um, our, well, he, he's got a lot going on. Uh, Eel's End is probably one of the bigger... Nexus's Nexi question mark probably nexus. I would assume nexi. Nexi. it's it's nexus, nexus I think it's nexus um, both ways of illicit activities within Corvosa but as the uh, field marshal told you it is this is almost more of a mafia situation hmm. they can't do anything about him because he doesn't do anything concrete to give them a reason to. Uh, and beyond that, he does manage his own business very thoroughly. Hmm. Uh, which means he's pretty busy. Right. Right. So in that case, I actually might have an idea. Right. So I'm, I may or may not have an idea of how to get the spot more or less. Definitely need to get the money for sure. Just is it is the money? What is your total that you got with the eighteen? Uh, twenty three altogether. Well, twenty three. You would know that that is that that last part is is actually kind of paramount uh, to him being able to continue operating Eels End within the city. Uh, he can't cause problems for the guard. Uh, you would, as a matter of fact, know that Eel's End is probably the worst and most dangerous place that a fugitive of the law could possibly go. Mm. If you want to absolutely guarantee your capture, <laughs> <laughs> you seek sanctuary in Eel's End because the King of Spiders is having absolutely none of that. Um, so the fact that you it's a it's a difficult line. It's a tough one for sure because he doesn't want to interact with the guard. He won't let you in. Like they won't even let you into the eels at pier if they know you're with the guard. But if you Im can imply that you are trying to help him with problems, or the guard's not after him, but someone else with ties to eels, and that's very much something he could be interested in. Hmm, interesting. Well, so I uh Flopin basically uh relays that well basically think of Eel's End as kind of like a uh, a refugee, you know, a place of sanctuary for those that are up to no good and are guaranteed capture. So and was that the opposite of what he said? That's large very largely the opposite of what if I just said. If criminal oh, goes there, guaranteed handed to guards. Okay, my bad. I got it backwards. My apologies. Because um, he wants no trouble. That's yes. Flavlin. Basically. Um. <laughs> it would be Flavlin to tell you the opposite of what I mean. <laughs> It's dubious knowledge. but it's <laughs> Dubious <laughs> understanding. Yep. Yes. My apologies. Um, okay. And I, what I meant to say then in that case is uh, basically Flavlin is explaining to them like, you know, he doesn't want anything to do with guards, more or less for obvious reasons. Uh He's very, he runs a very tight ship, like it was stated. And uh, basically, for lack of a better term, you got to know the right person to, to like at least get a conversation started. And Floblin might be able to uh, figure out a way to wiggle in whether uh, with his, uh, for lack of a better term, uh, politics of the underworld or just old school, like, you know, being tiny and able to fit in places. I, it, I, 
I hate to sound like I hate you, Flobin, but I don't trust you talking our way into anything. Most people do not take a shine to a goblin who is 100% on fire 100% of the time well, every single day of the week. No, I mean, no, no, in all fairness, this is kind of my you know, university. Yeah, yeah cut, cut him some credit. Uh, he got us the informant, uh, and he managed to talk to him. I wasn't there for that. I apologize yeah, if no, I missed it. No, no one was in his burning building. Uh, it worked out oh, really then, well. Then color me wrong, being very doubtful of your skills that you apparently have underneath that flaming head of yours. Unfortunately, well, you see, it's, it's quite simple logic, really. If you want to be able to, like, talk to a dumpster, you got to think like a dumpster. Well, unfortunately, that dumpster actually made Arden and I, when we were down there, make uh, doing some investigation. So it'd probably be best that they didn't see our faces. I, I, I can make that happen. Like, what, like, like I, I, I can make sure that, that we're not us. Don't tell me you did something stupid that goes to the ill's end and then say, I am with the god. Uh, not, it's nothing so dumb, but we were investigating down that area. They noticed us, saw our, yeah, our badges. It just didn't work out. We, we, we were looking Please don't make me roll any for my nephew. Please roll a die. But, but roll I, me a deception. Please roll me a deception. I want you to roll me a deception. I, I thought about it. Like, I can't. You, know, you have roll to. Me a roll me a deception, check. please. This is a... Uh, Hurt that puppy. John's perception, DC. Uh, geez, freaking fighter perception, DC. All right. Uh, so I rolled an eight. Um, <laughs> uh -huh. Flash our badges. Flash our flash or badges. <laughs> Who would flash our badges? That would be idiotic. Who would do that? That is, you I mean, you can, why? You can, I don't know why that happens. Lovely is just giving you that look. You can stop now. It's okay. I understand. But um, yeah, we shouldn't we show our faces. No. Make up a story then. They say you're no longer, and if they saw your badges in his honor, literally, this is just like honorary guard badge, right? Like this is nothing. Just, just, just to be clear, you want me to lie to them. If you don't lie. I lie. Foblin lies. Uh, I mean, I, I don't just, really tell the whole truth is my story. Maybe we just stay out of sight. Or, or, or maybe know, if, if we just, you know, present the money, they won't care because they... Money talks. Those are things they will care if they know you're with the god. Floblin just said they would care. Uh, I, we, I, as I said, though, we, we could not be us. I, I can make that happen. You with, can make that happen? With, How do you make that with, happen? With magic. Well, well, you could just put a mask on. I don't think or they're going to ask you to take it off. They might. They might. Uh, but we'll cross that bridge when we get there. I guess we could always tell them no. They, they are across a bridge. Is it the bridge or a pier? I, th I thought it was a bridge. I uh, thought it was a boat. I, th I think actually all of you might be right in this one particular instance. <laughs> <laughs> all I know is that it's that way. And uh, we should probably get going. Is there boat. any Mr... <laughs> I'm sorry, I forgot your name. Uh, Aramon Akuminos. Akuminos. Mr. Akuminos. Is there anything else we need to know? How... Uh, well, I'm not sure I have a terrible sight more information about the situation in Eel's End, but I can give you uh, what, what details I have. Uh, if you're going to be heading that way now, I imagine the sun is due to set here and activity on the pier should be near its peak. Uh, I'm going to be making my way towards my estate up in the main shore, towards Old Corvosa. I'll join you for the journey if you wish. Um, As a matter of fact, I would... Uh, I would... Be honored sure. to get to join these, uh, to, to hear from your own mouth some of the tales of your recent exploits for Corvosa. Oh, sure. If the city had more fine folk like you, I'm sure we wouldn't be in the dire straits we are now. Well, it won't take I guess. Yeah. No problem was it at all. Did Actually, last time I had a man join me, I turned him in and got a nice shield out of it. <laughs> then I'll accompany you, at least for the lion's share of the journey, after all. Did, did you go to school with, him, with, with the spider, too? School with the spider? No, I run my own school here in town. I'm a... Uh, Fencing instructor, actually. Uh, oh, that oh. sounds interesting. Many. I never actually learned proper fencing. Many, and I don't believe I quite deserve this title myself, uh, have referred, uh, have called me a master of swordplay, uh, which uh, I accept graciously, but there's always more to be learned in these arts. They said the same thing about my father. And uh, people who live in Corvosa, you want me a society check real quick? <laughs> sure. <laughs> I'm gonna make it. Woo! Nat 20. A uh, 3. 21. Uh, yeah. He, he knows. <laughs> um, then, Reth, you wouldn't have put it together because definitely not something that you uh, would have investigated before. Uh, but once he mentions that, it is absolutely something you would have heard of. Uh, Akuminos here would actually be one of, if not the most storied uh fencing and swordplay instructors within all of Corvosa uh, who would have 
some pretty impressive students under his belt throughout the years that he has been teaching within the city's walls. Uh, it is very possible that this very plain looking nobleman here, who does not at all appear as such, may be one of, if not the best sword fighters in the entire city. Hmm. At least in the practice and the art itself. Well, you know, now that you're mentioning it, I have heard a thing or two about a particular, uh, I reckon that was you, won't it? And with the natural 20, uh, you would actually... It's the only way I could critically succeed. <laughs> it was it is definitely <laughs> the only way you could critically succeed. Uh, with a natural 20, you would remember a couple of those very recent protégés of his, uh, if only for the... Absurdity? Scandal <laughs> involved uh, that had, uh, had occurred. And... Uh, the most recent and perhaps the only thing you really would have heard of uh, uh, Akumanos' sword school is that it's not so much a thing in the last little while. He had two very high-profile clients in the last couple of years. Watch Captain Grau. Hmm. Close personal friend of his. And a woman by the name of Sabina Marin. Who you might know as the queen's left hand at the moment. So he seems to produce pretty, pretty impressive results given the station of both of those two figures. But you would have heard of this not because they were particularly impressive or anything, but because, boy, howdy, did we have some scandal going on in there? Hmm. You heard. All of this. I got the I got the story from the man via drunken rantings of Grau's interest in Savina in the past. But it turns out that Kuminos here also quite interested in a an identical prize here, and this all came to a head that ended in a duel. Not between Grau and Akuminos, but between Sabina and Akuminos. This all kind of blew up. They all went their separate ways. It was a big thing throughout some of the nobility for uh, a while. And obviously, this is something you keep up on, but this was maybe a year ago, two years ago. and Probably the last you'd really heard about his, his uh, school of sword play. So you definitely recognize him when he gets into that. And you're like, oh, you're that guy. Yeah. Oh. yeah. I'll um, not humiliate him in front of everyone. Please humiliate him in front of everyone. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll let him save some face. I'll be like, oh, you're that guy. Well, fantastic. I've heard some lovely things about your school. I do take a great amount of pride in my arts, truth be told. Uh, though I would not call myself anything near a master. It is something I have spent the vast majority of my life towards perfecting and dedicating. And it is all that I can do to pass it on to my fine students. Uh, now, make no mistake, I am not here to attempt to sell you on the art of swordplay, and uh, far from that uh, enrollment in any of my courses, uh, I simply wish to see Corvosa brought forth to a new dawn, so that we may close this strange and bloody chapter of our history and leave it as a short one. Well, well that's good, because I can't hold a metal sword. Well, I've, I, I, I'm sure this is something that can be overcome. I've had literal children uh, that have been able to bring to quite a frightening degree of competency. Uh, it, it's a religious thing. Uh, ah, I understand. And... Again, this is far from what I meant to press. And uh, Field Marshal Croft, uh, thank you for introducing me to these fine full care. Uh, I believe if there's not much more you need to cover with them. And she and shakes her head No, I believe that we've cleared our bases there. You have your mission. Find something actionable that we can use with the ambassador by whatever means you need to undertake. But Edelzind is, again, an impressive and well-managed enterprise. Be safe. Be careful. And I cannot repeat more that this is something that needs to be kept very 
your, your connection to the Corvos and Garden has be kept very close to the chest. Uh, the powers will, I imagine, not take kindly should it be discovered that it was my orders that sent you there. All right. Whose orders was it? Listen, we just went to, just because we wanted to. Anyways. Well, it sounds like this is a journey you want to undertake then because you want to. That's exactly what this is. As Akumano says, there has its most activity around sundown and in a few hours thereafter. It's much more energized during the night than it is during the day, as well, I suppose uh, many of these sort of activities throughout the city that they want to keep from the light of dawn. Stay safe. Do your best. Of course, we rewarded on your return. Feel free to use... Uh, and uh, she turns back and takes a pretty fat jingling purse from the counter and just kind of dangles it a bit to make the sound. Any or all of this to influence her powers if necessary. Uh, this is not part of the peril you'll be receiving afterwards. And hands it to you. And it's a pretty thick purse of 50 gold pieces. Huh. Could I ask one more question? Of course. By the way. I mean, the money's all, all g good and everything, but is there anything... You, you seem to know him a little bit, but is, is there anything personal we, we could use to, to pressure him in, in addition to the money? Sir Powers, I know nothing nothing of the man save for the operation he runs the deals in. Uh, any information on that end, hopefully, Akumanos will be able to provide you on your way down there. Uh, okay. Now, wish you the best of luck. All right, then. And, uh... Akumanos a smile on his face. Right then, thank you again, Croft. And uh, let us make haste. If we leave now, we should be able to arrive at the Eels End Pier uh, right around as the sun sets, I believe. Perfect time to make our way onto the pier. So we'll force the group of you to make your way onto the pier uh, in an absolutely unremarkable fashion, as I imagine is what you're after. All right, he's in. Um... I got to go back to the barrack real fast. Oh, of course. Prepare yourselves as you as you do see. I suppose I'll meet you outside the gatehouse? That sounds favorable, yes. Right. Please. Uh, thank you, of course, for allowing me to accompany you through the town. Oh, that's our, our pleasure. Thank you. Um, All right, Sim. Let's make right. our preparations quick. This armor is probably not going to work. Um, I still see got the that quartermaster one. again. I still got that dirty blanket that you used last time. The blanket? No, or the no, sheet no. or whatever. Oh, you know, <laughs> well, you, I reckon the quartermaster is still in his, uh, in his little office there. We could go get you some nice leathers. Yeah, well, they get me some nice leathers. All right, I'm gonna get. I'm gonna go to the quartermaster. I need to get some. I'll come along away. with you. I, I, I will not. And I, I'll. I'll I'll get a scarf or something from somewhere. There's a conversation about seeing the same faces constantly throughout the day. Oh no, well, <laughs> it's not the same faces. It's now this face and that face instead of that face and that face. It, it's it, a little refresher. Uh, although I'm I'm if I'm telling you to, to get us through the guards. I I can definitely put put you in a disguise that won't will work. That'll be useful, but probably this 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 that, armor is very that's, obvious. That's gotta go. Stable company. Yeah. Um. Actually, I wasn't wearing Sable Company armor when you I went down. Before. Oh! It's the, I still look like totally like a government agent while I wear the Sable Company armor, though. You yeah. don't have... So you don't have, like, uh, official... You don't have the, the issue, the regimental armor, because you haven't joined the Sable Company. Right, you it's have, painted on. Yeah, you, you have, like, their colors, and you have their uh, adept's gear. But... The difference... Between the guard and the sable company is again the difference with the guard and like the military. Right. Um, though you're not familiar with Fields End, and yeah, sure, if you if you're going for maximum incognito, you could definitely get something less remarkable. Uh, it's far more likely that the guy who runs a full boat uh, would see many off-duty sable company marines. Uh, perhaps frequenting his peer than he would want to do Corvos and guards. Got you, got you. Because they're, you're not like there to arrest people. You're soldiers. Right, right. Okay, all right. Now I, I feel better about that then. So yeah, I won't worry. About any excuse not to go see the quartermaster, I will happily <laughs> take. You had me, and I don't have to talk to the quartermaster. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, a, a, I, I'm gonna try to get like a scarf or something to go across my face to make it. It'll look like I'm a guy trying to hide his identity, but I won't be that guy. Well, it's also. You know, probably perfectly reasonable yeah. given the nature of Eel's End, honestly. Alright, Zen. 
I'm just going to go back to my barrack room, check my equipment, and decide what baby stay home. What all are you bringing, John? 50 weapons, Tiller? <laughs> um, <laughs> probably the side to short sword and just the long sword. John <laughs> positive KD. <laughs> Only one in the party. Than all you guys. You're still bringing your side? Mm -hmm. Yep. That's like his favorite. Mm -hmm. That's just hilarious, though. Like, that's the... That's like the most distinctive possible thing that you could bring as mm -hmm. a weapon is the size. It's, listen, the, the idea is you make yourself stand out so much, no one wants to pay attention to you. <laughs> Everyone's <Awesome>. embarrassed. <laughs> <laughs> so they pretend they don't see. Horror of secondhand embarrassment emanating out from John. <laughs> Why aren't you the one wearing the, the eye patch? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, are any of the rest of you making any specific preparations before you head down the eels and I'm gonna take my badge and I'm gonna put it on my pillow? Oh, naturally, yeah, the badge. Yeah, I'm gonna I, need I, the shield I on assume the bed. you're getting rid of your badges. I <laughs> assume nobody is, if not, not bringing them. You are at least not wearing them. I'll just put it in my gun because you're not stupid. Mine's still in my stomach. <laughs> We're bringing at least one. We'll get floblins later. <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually changing out of my cloak and just pu putting on a regular clothing. And uh, he's actually going to ch change his hair a little bit. And uh, actually put on a little bit of druid makeup. Druid makeup? Like, or like. Mud. Mud concealer. Symbols of his, of his tribe on his, on his face because it will d distract people. He's, he's not wearing anything like he was before and he looks kind of weird. Hey, I mean, weirder than normal. Weirder than normal. All right, fair enough. A higher grade of weird. Um, <laughs> and the rest of you, I imagine, have not been to Eel's End and have no need to attempt to conceal yourselves like the two dingleberries who made their way down there flashed their Corvos and guard badges and immediately got run out. I did not flash my <laughs> badge. You flashed your badge by association. I had the misfortune of being with the person who flashed their badge. Do, do you do you want me to disguise you? Um, probably not right now. I think we'll be um as long as when, I when we get closer. I have a dis I, look. I have, I, have, I I can do this. Oh no! Now they won't know who I am. You're a completely oh. different person. Who is this man who well, joined our group? Look at that. There's a purple bandit in our midst, but not that purple bandit. He's wearing these very distinctive, colorful suits and chains, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. I wonder who he could be. I the purple just... shirted ice stabber. That's I it. Think that... <laughs> <laughs> I think. <laughs> Oh. You can't tell who I am if I do this. <laughs> That's how it works. Uh, uh, honestly, I pass you the other side. <laughs> totally new guy. Someone right? else. You you kind of still smell the same. We're gonna have to fix that I real quick. I don't think you have to worry about most people sniffing other people. That's kind of socially not accepted. Well, I mean, it isn't goblin culture. No, we're not goblins in a lot of ways. We're civilized people. You never know. There could be goblins in well, there. Most of these people in the city are civilized. Well, it, it's Super actually, lies. it's it's common practice that if someone comes up to try to sniff you, you're allowed to punch them in the face. I like so, that practice. Do, do I got to get out it's that chart? It's actually codified of, into the law at this point. <laughs> but, do I got to get out that chart of like when people approach you and add sniffing somewhere in there? No, <laughs> Probably, but, yes. But, oh, the, the trust chart. <laughs> <laughs> you get the trust chart again, fair but, enough. But don't you just subconsciously start to associate people with, with the way they smell? Like not like you're sniffing them, but just because so, it, it happens. What I mean, the that's heck what are you do. talking well, about? It's, and well... Uh, to be fair, it's the baker smells like fresh bread. The produce man smells like fresh produce. But in the city, everyone smells like sweat, blood, and bile. But that's not true. He smells like garbage. Uh, oh yes, sweat, blood, and bile. You you kind of smell like metal and t t cardamom, <laughs> and uh, he kind of smells like uh, salt, and uh, the something sweat. something flowery. <laughs> it's not blood. I, 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 like, I, I think you might wear cologne. Is you wear cologne? Wait. Can oh, you afford cologne? How would cologne smell like salt? No, that's the sweat. Yeah, yeah. You smell like gunpowder. <laughs> it's not a surprise. I got a lot in my pocket. <laughs> so, prepared as you're going to be, I suppose. Incredibly grateful that the cologne question slipped by on Andy. <laughs> <laughs> With perfume. The group of you make your way from the barracks towards the gatehouse. Axe. Where Armin Akuminos 
<laughs> just standing there um, off to the side of the road, patiently waiting for the group of you. I uh, turn to see you approaching with a smile upon his face and bows deeply once more uh, before gesturing on the road. Very well then, shall we? What, I suppose? <sighs> I must thank you again, not for just your timely arrival to well, this particular outing. Uh, this is not a, so much you would think a personal service to myself. It, it is a great one for the city of Corvosa. And if the guard and uh, the citadel of Bolshevik itself had, well, no such figures to rely on as the group of you, I think Cressida would be out of her depth. There would be much that would be able to be accomplished here, and I don't want to see off Line City with any more problems than given these strange times. Of course. Who would be out of her depth? Oh, Cressida, the Field Marshal Croft. I apologize. Oh! Um, she's been a close personal friend of mine for a great many years, actually. You seem to know I say that's a full portion of my career, I suppose. Uh, styling myself as a teacher of sword, sword play throughout the city of Corvosa, and a fairly high end and proficient one at that. I need connections. I have little more than word of mouth to be able to reach a clientele that would agree to train with me. Uh, that could afford the coin, anyway. Maybe I'll. May, maybe we'll, we'll get there someday. Uh, certainly, if the watch captain keeps paying us as well as she's been. We'll have to have something to spend it on. Field Marshal. Uh, but I certainly Field did not Marshal. want to join you in this journey to uh, talk of my own accolades or uh, my own exploits throughout my life. Truth be told, I am far more interested in the group of you. Uh, you have arrived out of seemingly nowhere, and to my understanding and uh, uh, what I can gauge with my own eyes, if I'm not being uh, a sight too judgmental, you don't even all hail from within the city of Corvosa yourselves, and yet you seem to have thrown aside near everything in her defense. Oh, it's easy to throw aside everything when you have nothing to throw aside, so... I find the folk who make such claims are often discounting a great many things they have going for them in their lives. Like what exactly? I'm not sure. I haven't gotten to know you fair enough yet. Well, uh, and I believe in our, the haste of our introductions and our travel for this mission, I haven't even quite gotten all of your names properly. You have mine, but uh, please, with who do I have the pleasure? Uh, Darren Copperbell, sir. Jean Silla. Mm -hmm. Floblin. Floblin. Fitting name for a goblin as any, I suppose. Wraith Natsuki. Arden. I'm just Arden, then. Uh, it's a pleasure to make all of your acquaintances. Uh, so then, John, if I may, um, what has brought you to Corvosa? Well, there must be something that has dragged you so far afield from wherever it is that you call home. Is this just one step in the journey I'm taking? I was tasked on from my mother's dying deathbed to deliver a ring to my sister. She is in an academy they sent her off to because she is so bright and perfect. Kind of thrilling and evocative backstory, I would imagine. More befits someone like Blackjack or, I don't know, any of the ancient heroes of... He, he didn't forget, I forgot. The last wall. Uh, <laughs> it really isn't much of anything. It is just a poor boy from a poor village. No family left there, so nothing keeping him there anyways. It's your mother's dying wish. Yes. No wonder you care about that ring so much. Yes, and she was a hag. What? She was awful. Well, that's a terrible thing to say about your mother. Oh, it's a terrible... It's a good thing to say about the mother who is terrible to you. So, so she was a changeling? Like, I, like, like a... <laughs> I had no intention to drag uh, dredge up any trauma of your past, John. And I, oh, uh, it's, it's fine. Talking about it makes it feel better, actually. As oft times I find it does. Well, uh, Darren it was. I believe it's no real mystery as to your death. Although it is strange, I suppose, that you've thrown your lot in with the Kovosan God once things are starting to fall apart. Well, I was just a trainee before, well, everything went crazy. But um, I was told to go home. Uh, the table company didn't need me, but uh, the guard did. Uh, indeed, the, the queen herself asked me to join. So can't say no to that. So it's true, then. The group of you had been directly by the crown. You met with the new queen, Eliosa, in Calosa? Indeed. That's an impressive claim to fame that not many in the city of Corvosa have. And for an outsider, doubly more so. Is it really that impressive? Well, it's rare. Well, especially I... with the time and we're going to be some of the only people who have met her. Well, I assume so. They just took a random riffraff off the streets and said, hey, 
of the city. Random hey. riffraff bringing back her very precious heirloom. Is that the random riffraff just happened upon a bond when killing a man for revenge? Oh, and they never actually, you know, they never actually asked us the story of how we found it. But what is any of our journeys through life but a string of seemingly random coincidences? That's what makes the journey so interesting and so eventful, isn't it? It's you can also, never predict what the next day will bring. It's also slightly annoying when you run into a man screaming at you about a Grutus and also a drunk. A Grutus? A Grutus. I don't know what it is. He's I can't a, speak to that one, I suppose, but it's our experiences that shape us, are they not? And you can undersell them as hard as you may, John Tiller, but I've heard, and from Cressida of all people, nothing but awe as she spoke of you. You have profoundly impressed her with your aptitude. I can imagine that perhaps given your very uh, very immediate and sudden arrival on the scene and at her very doorstep across her desk, she may not have known what to expect of the group of you unknown quantities as you were, but you seem to have done damn fine jobs. Well, I mean, can't argue with that. We get results. It, it was in the cards. Oh, it's just us doing our jobs. Doing our jobs well. Like any hard worker would do anyways. And that's what keeps the city running. Well, we... we... That's what keeps most society running, right? And hopefully, if you should find success here this night, you'll prevent just one more situation from rising and cause the city great woe. It's always interesting to consider. Had you five not been the ones that are here, had you not been the ones uh, to be contacted by Cressida with this particular problem, the ones that had been delivered to me, that had found my information about the Senate Chilish ambassador, you could have lived the rest of your lives peaceably, gladly, having no idea of the crisis that well, may very well so narrowly have been alerted by the hands of some other enterprising members at the hands of the Kulosan Guards. It's a wonder how many more of these near misses are happening all around us nearly all the time. There's just... An entire web of lives stretched out in every direction that we don't touch, we don't even see. It's but a, everyone has their own story. That's a dizzying thing to consider, sir. It's like at least one near miss a week, probably. So all Reth is hearing out of this dude right now is, why couldn't that have been me? I could have been flirting with the queen. <laughs> it doesn't. If it's <laughs> off that way, that's <laughs> not how I'm intending no, it is the fun. GM. That's just how okay. Reth is hearing it. Like, that's fair how enough. Reth is hearing it the thing he knows about the dude oh that's fair well yeah. but he's it his thing <laughs> with Tina, so yes. yeah that's fair yeah, yeah. Right, he, he's, he's like someone said he looks Savina. like a playboy what <laughs> he looks like a playboy it's the mustache it is the mustache, <laughs> it's mustache 200 percent the mustache and, uh, well groomed. anyways well you know if, i have a little bit of man crush if <laughs> If, if you had been the one to uh, help uh, a, a ghost avenge her death against uh, a really minor crime lord and uh, been been predicted to save the city, then you, you could have been. That's, that's a good point, actually. More this coming from the mouths of near anyone else within the city, I would just assume this was sarcasm, but this... This no. can't honestly be a thing that's befallen you, is it? No, the ghost was a very real thing. Well, she wasn't a ghost when we first moved. I guess she was a ghost when we first saw her. I think her. she was. Yeah, it's, that was definitely a ghost. Yeah, it has been a ghost, because then we found her head in the box. Did Unbelievable. You, do, do, I, you honestly, do you honestly think that this, this group of, 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 of it, ran, randoms just met without that kind of thing? Prior to this very stroll through our city this evening, I would never have imagined that my life would appear so tragically mundane contrasted with... That of a group of, well, as you saw, as you call yourselves, near random strangers here. But hey, these tales you have, you know, just the past few weeks seem to have surpassed near anything I've experienced. It's pretty surprising, actually, how little we know of one another. We fought in the same battles together, yet I don't even know what his favorite food is or what he did before he decided to be Sable Company. I mean, that's, that's fair, I suppose. I mean, goodness, well, has it only been a few days? It's only been a few days. Well, if I had to risk a guess, I'd probably say it's something to do with chicken. I like would his off his, the the thing about the I mean the to, be, and the, to be perfectly honest it happens to be whatever's hot and on my plate at the moment I'm as, not a picky eater. He's got the points with that. He's sixteen. Well, as much as our experiences may shake us uh, or shape us, they are certainly not shackles. Our past does not bind us to a specific course. And always free to change uh, change our heading as we see fit. Huh. The hero no, cards don't say that. No, Talk not, to this one. Not really, actually. I, I'm pretty sure that. Uh, once, once you set off along your path, you can uh, 
you, you could deviate a, a little, but uh, I, I think you made your, your, there are some choices that, there, there are some choices that change you and you can't ever go back. Fate is ironclad, except when it's not. What? That's quite a rigid interpretation of fate. Perhaps one of the most so I've ever heard. I was it's, about to say, when she read us the hero cards earlier, it was very vague. It's it's not about the, the, the hero cards. It's about the fact that there are some events in your life that, that drive you down someplace that you, you can't come back from. Well, I guess, I guess, I guess death. This is very permanent. Until it's not. What? What? You haven't heard <laughs> stories? Well, yeah, I mean, undead well, stories. We did literally talk to a ghost. Well, she yeah. was still dead. She wasn't living and breathing. It was uh, just a ghost. Mm, undead get kind of spooky. Well, yes, Imagine. it's a ghost. It's terrifying. At this point, your thoroughfare is passing through the university di district, uh, angling off towards North Point at a bit of a fork. Uh, one road heading down towards North Gate itself, and one forking off towards Main Shore. Uh, and as you approach this intersection, he kind of gestures up. Well, here, I'm afraid, is where our paths part. Uh, I wish you the best of luck in the Eagles, and I'm afraid... Uh, I apologize to say that I'm afraid there isn't really much more that I can tell you about the things I've discovered. I know... Precious little about the underlings of Eelsand itself, only the connections that this Chelish ambassador had to several of the uh, activities you have there. Though, if I could recommend perhaps just a small bit of this, be this admittedly far from my area of expertise, this King of Spiders that runs the place. Uh, sure, a purse and shiny coins will possibly do you some favors to get you in the door and perhaps buy a bit of his attention. A man like that won't so easily be swayed by coin. It may be worth some investigation to learn what you can about the man, about the man behind the crown, uh, perhaps an Eelsind itself, uh, how he runs his things, uh, what particular skeletons he very m may very well have within his own uh, closet. That said, John, by this road that you've walked, and the one that's before you and the group of you, I imagine that you're outlook on things will improve given time. Uh, you're young enough, and he looks over at Darren. Not as young as some, perhaps, but you do truly undersell yourself. I don't, I don't understand what you're saying. Well, I've heard only a fair handful of things about the group of you, and you're the only one who's spoken of your adventures negatively. True, you're the only one that's lived them, but perception is a great amount of things. You have a very optimistic way of looking at things, don't you? I'd like to believe I do. Huh. And I think it's, well, if not an easier way to live, certainly a more pleasant one. That sounds fair. Anyway, thank you for escorting me throughout the city and allowing me to join you. I wish you the best of luck with this adventure. And if everything I've heard is true, I know you'll do myself and Cressida, as well as the city of Corvosa, proud. T take this. It was really nice meeting you. Is it a rock? Yes. <laughs> Takes it, looks at it. <laughs> How strangely fitting. Well, I thank you, Arden, for this gift. Mm. Now, wherever the evening takes you, stay safe, my new friends. That's just... Thank you, sir. And uh, bows deeply once more before taking his leave. Uh, again, this fork the opposite, di uh, the direction due east, whereas your road north past Main Shore would take you to the furthest pier of the Narrows. And back for two of you once more to Eel's End. It's very disappointing you get a shiny new shield, you can't even use it. I know. I'm sorry. It's fine, I wasn't. Fork. <laughs> <laughs> I want the fork. But I suppose it is there. We should take our midstream break before we actually arrive at Eel's End and begin our investigations to try and find something concrete that we can use to pin down this Chelish ambassador because he sounds like he's kind of a dick. Mm. And mm. Corvosa does not need extra national problems when they <laughs> already have enough of an issue with the succession of the crown. Thank you, everyone, for being here, for hanging out, for supporting us. We're going to be uh, maybe 10, 12 minutes standing up, stretching our legs. Feel free to use the bathroom, feel free to refill your drink, get some go too hard. We're just approaching Eel's End. We're only barely to the hook. We're back. So, uh, Welcome back, everybody. And before we get back into things, there was a hero point that I did not see from Kaga for... 
He's like my cat in food. Such a weird little grabby hand. That's <laughs> the octopus. Use this to keep espousing. <laughs> or is chaos, it a squid? It makes octopus. me not want to give it to him. <laughs> now here we are. Thanks, Kaga, for all the subs too. Yeah, thank you for all the gift subs throughout this. Hey, yeah, he threw out one too. I got this card back. Daring attempt. How hard could it be? I, I actually used that to great success when saving the noble. I I don't know if I just felt it in my soul. I have this curse where I can see five seconds in the future and there's nothing I can do about it. <laughs> uh, as I picked up that card handy, I was thinking, I wonder if we're going to get the first person who just gets the same card back again. It's a one in six chance, because uh, assuming six of us get the cards at a generally equal rate. Mm. And then, of course, it was that card immediately, and it was also you. Know, it's a good card, how though. everything works. Um, so, but briefly before we continue, we know there are some little weird audio issues in here, and it's because the computer is very angry. I don't know why the god of computers is very angry, uh, but it is decided, I don't know if this is a recent Windows update or whatever, that it would like to max its CPU at random now, uh, which causes those weird little audio stutters, which unfortunately we can't really fix mid-show. Uh, but hopefully it's not too terribly intrusive. As we had left off before the break, our group was just making their way to Eel's End. And as you uh, cross the easternmost bridge of the Narrows and then make your way around to the furthest pier, the group of you arrive at Eel's End looking very different um, than the two of you would have seen when you arrived at like 2 p.m. the other day. Uh, the pier, as the sun comes down and sets, is much more well lit. It's, uh, it's nearly as illuminated as if it were daytime throughout much of this uh, central walkway and the platform around which these five ships are moored. Well, we described it last session uh, but briefly, for the three of you who have not seen it, you would be seeing much the same thing. The Eels End itself, this massive vessel in the center, flanked with a pair of smaller ships moored up on either side around this wooden platform out in the river uh, Jigare. Now these lamps that are lit up everywhere are no mundane, simple torch sconces or lanterns. Uh, it is a bunch of works of iron and glass uh, carved into the shape of large, very spindly-legged spiders perched upon posts and pier supports, uh, casting their illumination throughout the area. Uh, lanterns with coiled metal eels wound around them hang from the edges of the decks of the ships and many of the larger uh, post, uh, post and mooring supports at the main platform of the center of Eel's End, some 60 feet down the pier. There are far... Are we beyond hope? Okay, I was like, it sounds like we've lost the ability to stream, but, uh... Huh? I think we might be... I think we might be beyond hope. Uh, it's not a bad stopping point. If, if it no, it's okay. If it's, if it's all right. I don't want to. If it, like the CPU maxing thing is going to happen every three seconds. I'm not talking about like the creaking noises. That ship's creaking in Siren's Cave. I'm talking about like the, the thing hitched like four yeah. times in yeah. five seconds. Uh, <laughs> um, where's the CPU right now? Okay. Well, we'll keep going for now, but we might. Uh, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. We'll keep an eye on it. It's not a thing. It looks like it's getting better. Um, one second. Where was I? Oh, it'd be a great number more people on this pier than there were when the pair of you had arrived the other day. Uh, as there is not really like a crowd. It's not a thick throng, uh, but a few dozen people on this central wooden platform, as well as many more moving about the decks of the ships around the Eel's End. Uh, as a matter of fact, the lower deck of the Eel's End itself, with all the tables and chairs laid out, as you've seen before, are now... Uh, near full with a great number of carousers gambling, playing dice games, drinking, and just dancing around near the edges of the ship itself. Uh, this music 
that drifted out from the ship on uh, the left as the two of you had first approached is much louder now. A, uh, a full accompaniment of a string uh, fiddle-led orchestra emanating out with this very kind of high-energy jig wafting from the ship, uh, clearly labeled on its side as the Twin Tigers, uh, while the rest of the ships don't produce nearly as much sound. This almost so kind of lower music wafts out throughout the whole of the pier and even to the shore nearby, uh, lending a sort of upbeat and very energetic and happy ambience to the whole area. What is unchanged is the pair of guards posted at the front of the pier, who are now a little more attentive at their post at either side, uh, watching comers and goers into the pier, uh, just looking them over, kind of looming over the folk. Uh, many of them, many more of them commoners, but no very small number of them uh, fairly dressed lower nobility making their way to and fro from Will's End. I, 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 kind of had, I, I kind of had an idea. Did it, Darren? And this is like out, out of earshot of the guards uh, before we get too close. Remember how they told us that, that there was that place where, you know, you could have, you know, a good time with, with the woman folk? Uh, yeah. I mean, if, if we want to get information about the eel, maybe, you know, patronizing that place and, you know, I, giving them I don't know, think that's, a, a good time. A good you, want and, to, and, you want to send Darren, our young... Dead into I, I, a brothel. I was actually, Flushing crimson. I, I was actually I think thinking, it would be good for I'm thinking you two, because you look like the most... You've been here twice, and you got immediately recommended to hit up the brothel both times. I know <laughs> what I look like. I... <laughs> um, well, what are you doing? What are you doing? I, I, you're, you're not there yet. You're cause, just asking. Because, I mean, we, we need information before we go see him, right? I don't so, think, for what it's worth, I don't trust the group of us to mess this up and end up getting in some kind of conflict. Would y'all like me to be nearby waiting? Like when you're not coming on the ship with us? As in, like, I'll go find a nice tall tree or a bush or something, and if something happens, bring it up on the deck. <laughs> <laughs> There's a ghost. Are we haunted? <laughs> Is this, are we just haunted today? Yes. We, we might stop be. before we start getting like slowly killed off screen from weird things. Playing anyway. If now. you're going to have problems, what? just bring it up on the deck and I'll help take care of it I from a safe distance. I feel more comfortable with you close. Uh, to be honest with you, I mean, I'm not going to stop you from doing whatever that, you want to do. That's well, so sweet. Well, honestly, if you think about it, he's got a big gun and he's probably got a very large is, amount of range. So it's this, probably smart for him to be in the bush or something. Is oh, this d- not a safe town? This is, not, is this not an unsafe side of town? It's more like if y'all get into trouble, I'm going to be more useful to you with distance between me and them than I am up close. I don't mm-hmm. have, I don't plan on getting in trouble though. We, we could bring him a gift. I mean, to be fair. Uh, looking to at f- the other three people with us. <laughs> So, I mean, it, it, it could be right fair, now, I mean, but I mean, how are you? Uh, you'd only be good if we were able to get out onto the deck, right? Otherwise, you, we could be an, under there and they could just knife us and throw us in the river. And we'd never know. Well, at that point, I reckon that wouldn't be my problem, would it? He's got the point there. Come with I us can't on the come boat. in there and rescue you. Come I, with us on the boat, please. Yeah, fair I enough. Let me see you. I'm, I'm, I'm just saying that, that, I don't, that we should... We should we, we, we've got two choices here. We can go as, as ourselves and throw a big bag of money on that table and trust that we are smart enough, uh, clever enough, and uh, able enough to convince him with this bag of money to do what we want, which I don't think is a good idea given the abilities of everyone as I have seen thus far. Uh, or, or we could go get some dirt on him from you know the, the, the prostitutes who work for him and the guys uh, uh, looking and, and maybe trying to buy those prostitutes and, and then go into uh, him. Uh, I, I'll, I'll, try the, I'll try the dance boat. I, I, I think I'll let you guys do the, the, the I'll prostitute I'll try the gambling boat. over there. That's oh, actually, oh. gamblers talk a lot. G- especially gamblers and, and dancers are good too. And yeah. this, uh, this casino on the, on the deck of the Twin Tigers, uh, these two uh, swap buildings that have replaced any real decks that had turned this thing into the strange barge. Uh, we much more obvious at night, uh, with light emanating out from them and it being clearly visible even from here, uh, what's going on within. It's not exactly sheltered. 
Uh, as a matter of fact, it seems like it's almost designed as the opposite. The fact that you can peer in and you can see the games taking place from the shore uh, surely is no accident. The exact opposite of what you're seeing upon the House of Clouds and its large single building, which uh, draped up, and you can even see from the lanterns the gentle smoke kind of wafting up around from all the various incense burners out the deck entirely closed off. Uh, once people walk up, up planks and the walkways to those doors, uh, they are completely out of sight. People over here think of finding a tree or a bush nearby when the the uh, the sandbar is right over there behind the brothel boat. <laughs> like, I have a 150 foot range, everybody. Yeah, you could. I mean, the, I don't think you're finding a tree or a bush out here. A it's top of a building or something. But you are uh, on the side of Old Corvosa, which is uh, above the Narrows. You don't just have the bridges at walkway level. This is the part where buildings have kind of been like built and sort of stacked, almost ramshackled on top of each other. This is uh, beneath the shingles over here, where there is this kind of mishmash of walkways and rooftops and things uh, extending a decent, surprising, and somewhat uncomfortable and unsafe-looking distance above you. You could definitely head up into the shingles and find a position pretty much anywhere. I think I'm more likely to die climbing up there than going in that boat. Just climbing. <laughs> there are death spiders. Well, you've heard a little, well, you're I'm not from here. I'm about the probably, building collapsing on me. You've also probably heard a lot of various stories about things in the shingles. Uh, shingles from nests of sturges and bloat flies to uh, stranger sorts of things. Uh, like weird, long-armed, almost humanoid creatures. Be they demons or whatever, just sort of lurking about the eaves in the shadows. Uh, the shingles get the reputation. So, I think we just... You know, the best plan is just to walk forward calmly. Uh, yeah, d dancing girls sound good. Walk forward calmly and carry a big gun. I, I was, like it. I feel like everyone's saying different things. We all say <laughs> different things, but I'm just going to walk forward confidently. A lot of confidence. I mean, he's got the right idea. Might as well. You must <laughs> just find information Wait. as you go, as in, I don't know. Uh, fair enough, then. Yep. Find the a ball of people. So the group of you just kind of join on the people coming and going from Eel's End, uh, walking towards the pier, kind of nonchalantly. Uh, but as the group of you approach, one of the guards sticks a hand out in front of Rath. Uh, I just physically put a hand on your chest. The hell is that? I just kind of motion at the arquebus on your back. Well, it's sort of like a spear, but reaches farther. I don't think you'll find much use for it in Eel's End. So you're saying I can't bring this in, but he has a scythe, and that's okay. The scythe's fine. The sword's fine. That's a damn ship's cannon. If he was in needed cannons, we'd have our own. Well, you're not wrong. It is pretty big. You're welcome, welcome to leave it with us. Absolutely a not. Bit of a grin. Can I see a vantage point that looks like it would be good for Reth? You can see, like, a hundred. Because <laughs> you've got pretty much the whole of the shore in these buildings built up. You? Um, there's a shot of this in our intro of the Narrows, that these things go up like three and four stories of interlocking kind of ramshackle rooftops and offset levels. Derek, you can sit any number of places and over see all of Eel's End if you wanted to. Are you telling me you're trying to have a man part from a gift from his dear great dead grandfather? Oh, no. No, I tell you what. I'll go put it home. I'll be back. Just kind of pushes you back away from the pier. Oh, I'll I'll come with you. And as we're walking away, now nah, I'll be fine. I'll just be right up and I'll point like in front of me where they can't see it. Yeah. I'll be up there. I mean, I could just so I could I could just take it and swim over there and then pass it to you once you're no, past. Oh, they'll have a hiss fit if they see it. It'll be fine. You sure? Yeah, if anything happens, bring it on deck. All right. So, Reth makes his way up into the shingles, finding himself a nice little concealed location to uh, absolutely, like, actually get a chance to use the way of the sniper. 
Yeah. Which is an opportunity that arises once in a blue moon. Literally once this entire campaign. It was a very urban campaign. There's not a whole <laughs> lot of big sniping opportunities here. Uh, but as this all, like, uh, save for if they go below decks, uh, you have a good vantage point over pretty much all of this. Uh, you can see from a bit of an elevated position clearly the decks of all five of the ships here, as well as the whole pier and platform of Eels End itself. Definitely taking the time to put a suppressor on while I'm up there. <laughs> Screw out of his five pound clay pot. <laughs> so uh, but I imagine Darren, in short order, comes back to join yeah. the rest of the group making your way down the pier, sharing that uh, Rhett's going with Rhett's plan. That's fine. That's good. This is good. Um, this is good. All right. This is this your is, show, John. This is. This is this is good. You know, I don't think this is my show. Baldwin, this is your show, actually. <laughs> <laughs> you, uh, I'm completely out of my element. This is more people than I'm used to being around. Are you sure you don't want to say this is good a few more times? It, is, it might. It's, it's calming me down. It's kind of like a mantra. Calms yourself down. I, uh, this is good. Okay. I'm going right. to go over there and just gamble. Blubber just kind of stops you there and is like, oh, all right, all right, all right. I'll do some of the talking. But uh, remember, you know, if you chest out, be confident, and just look like you know what you're doing. I'm going to go up as that far away from you and do some gambling. <laughs> he just goes up to the Twin Tigers. And I think, I Don't like, spend I too the, much! I have the gold if you come get to me. All right. <laughs> he walks up to a blackjack table. 50 gold. 50 gold! <laughs> <laughs> We're about to double this. We're going to make it a mess, man. <laughs> right. Um, Take me to the high rollers. Yeah. <laughs> I want the good tables here. Uh, so as you make your way up, uh, taking this first gangplank to your left, to this barge with these two structures upon it. Uh, you can see as you sort of head up on the side, head up onto the side here, um, there are clearly a f quite a few guards sort of scattered throughout uh, the area. Two that are posted up at the front pier, always there. Uh, moving up onto the ships, it's, cl it's clear enough to pick out uh, the ones that are obviously part of the great end operation. Uh, they're all dressed near identically with their fairly heavy dark studded leather armor uh, with saps and manacles on their waists uh, and all of them show a similar disinterest in the festivities and revelry that's going on around them uh, making their patrols around the decks of the ships and keeping the area just under watch now, but as you make your way into the uh, Twin Tigers itself there is boy just a lot going on in here. Um, this is not a very fancy casino. As you make your way in to the noise and the source of the music becoming readily apparent as a small stage sort of cluttered off to the side sports this small band that's playing this, uh, again, jig is just wafting out the whole area. It's less organized. Like, it's not, it's less very much less dealer at a table. We can't fix it. Our CPU keeps maxing. Uh, it's very much like less like dealers at a table running things and many more small player run games that are absolutely just everywhere throughout this. Uh, there's dice games, card games. Uh, you do see something interesting off the side across from the band. There is a relatively wide table, uh, kind of a lot like the one we're sitting at, honestly. Maybe like boat haunted. Four. It's just I. It might be. Is it worth calling it and like just just picking it up next week? Because I'd I'd rather like stall this and do it later than have a show that's like impossible to listen to because the audio is breaking constantly because our CPU would, is having problems. I would say that because it's happening so consistently. It's like it's definitely getting worse. Yeah. It, it's happening like more and more consistently. Let's call it here at a good stopping point. Get like get to a good stopping point. Describe everything. Pick it up well, next we session after we fix this. Get, getting into Eel's End, I suppose, is a fine enough stopping point. It's yeah. definitely not what I wanted to do. Um, what we got? Like an hour and a half. Well, we can. I'm fine to keep going. Dry. I'm okay with it, going. Is there? A it's not you. Guys. <laughs> I know you are. We <laughs> want you. to. Like, yeah. I don't have any. I also would like to keep going. Is there any way we could just Let's... turn Sirenscape off and try to go without the background? The, well, that's and... doing it to our voices too. You just don't hear it. Oh, um, I didn't know that. Yeah, it's the audio is is. But I'm wondering if tricky. without Sirenscape pressuring it more, whether or not it might Sirenscape's get better. Sirenscape's like no overhead. Is... 
Sirenscape, yeah, Sirenscape being louder does not change the CPU. Got it. Uh, what we can try is what we're gonna try. Um, we're gonna restart everything um, and see if we can get anything to work there. I can't guarantee we're going to come back, uh, but we still have like a, a normally an hour and a half till we normally end. So hopefully, if we give everything a big healthy restart, whatever weird Windows problem is happening will go away. And we can come back and continue our adventures. So, yeah. hopefully, we'll be back in a few minutes. All right. Please, Peace. Abadar. <laughs> or whatever the Pathfinder God of Technology is. Cassandali, I guess. Cassandali. <laughs> <laughs>